Hello everyone, it is I, Zach from the future, and I am still crawling out of my hole uh, of backlogged stream replays that I didn't put up because I was working on the Every Film and Video. So running this contest, things is giving away like thousands of dollars, in, and, and Lowell's bot, giving away thousands of dollars in 3D printers, Greengate is giving away filament, it's crazy. Anyways, I challenged people to build a wearable. We haven't had any entries, so I thought, all right, I'll enter my own contest free printer. Here is what the final thing looks like. Spoiler alert, I know. Remember, not everything needs to be super elaborate. Sometimes a simple solution is best. This was a pretty interesting and mildly frustrating stream. We had a lot of Fusion 360 moments. Anyways, I don't want to spoil too much of the fun, so thanks for tuning in. Enjoy the show. Ladies, gentlemen, cyborgs, how's everyone doing on this? This fine Friday, welcome to Void Star Lab. Uh, yeah, we got some, oh man, everything's, everything's in disarray over here. I was, I was up all night working on uh, finishing our, our next video. That one's going to drop. Um, when's it going to drop? Probably tomorrow. Yeah, assuming we can get everything set. Uh, like all the, assuming we can make uh, make a good thumbnail and set up uh, all of our links, because this is uh, the every is one of our every filament episodes, which means that we have what like thirty affiliate links to generate something like that. Uh, yeah. Am I having such a tough time with this? I just can't seem to find a good angle that keep that gets the uh, the whatchamacallits in view, that gets the, the Patreon matrix in view. There we go. I was having I feel like I was having a harder time with like I'm having a harder time with that today than usual. Anyways, yeah, welcome everyone to uh, Void Star Lab. I have to do a little bit of I just realized I have to do a little bit of upkeep here. <coughs> <coughs> Bear with me one sec, because this episode is sponsored by our very favorite sponsor, Things. That's right. Things is uh, Things is back. We've been doing uh, been doing a lot of work on uh, circuit boards. So last time, so last time we uh, realized that uh, they never they, my rep didn't order the circuit boards. That he's he he passed he he passed it on. To the he passed on to the, the 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 fulfillment department, but they never placed the order. It turns out they still haven't placed the order. Uh, they sent me. Uh, by the way, like oh, this doesn't reflect negatively on uh, on on the company. They uh, this is not the standard channel by which you order circuit boards. I'm just venting my frustration a little bit. Uh, all right, they sent me some. They sent me a production file to verify, and it didn't include the attachment. Uh, and then they sent me the attachment. So let's real quick take a look at that and uh, see how uh, see how the keyboard's coming out. Cause projects. Uh, hey, um, yeah. So bear with me, bear with me one sec. Uh, we we were a little behind the uh, little behind the eight ball right here again. A little unprepared today because uh, I was up all night working on the last video. I know it's unprofessional. Cut me a little slack here. Limited number of things I can do each day. I'm also running on far, far too little sleep. I was... Yet, so yesterday... So yesterday, the, uh... The, 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 the leasing office... Oh, Jay Wieso gifted 10 subs to viewers. Thank you so much. That's a, thanks for kicking us off. Hype. Thank you so much. It was super generous. I really appreciate it, and I'm sure the uh, whoever receives it does too. Anyways, yeah, the building managers decided to repair a heating coil, and they didn't tell me, right? So I went to bed at like 4.30 or something, and I got woken up at like 9 or earlier. I don't even remember, because uh, they were replacing the heating coil. And that, of course, you know, you can't fall asleep after that. Uh, yeah, so today, you know, I stay up till almost 6 o'clock. I, I put 5.30... I put 5.30 in the title card, but, um, that's because I, uh, that's because it was 5.30 at the time, but I didn't actually fall asleep till past 6. And then our dog decides to start barking, and, uh, at 11.45, so basically I'm on, I've got less sleep over the last two days than I like to get in a single day, so I'm beyond tired. I'm on, like, a whole other level of tired. So I'm gonna do my best, and it doesn't help that I didn't actually prepare for this project at all, um, because the original plan today was to work on the keyboard, or is to finish that up, but 
I've been told by things that no one's entered our contest so far, and I find that really hard to believe because uh, we've announced that at this point over three over three hundred thousand people, and we haven't had a single entry yet to the Hello Wearables contest. And I'll be damned if I'm gonna. All right, let me let me explain the situation here. Uh, I have two things to. Uh... All right, uh, hang on a second. Let's tell the circuit board guys. Looks good. Let's good. Let's get this done ASAP. All right, so that's out of the way. Uh, okay, so now we have to go back to uh, here. I have to adjust all my all my commands and stuff. Uh, oh boy, we have to we have to get our get our we have to get our viewers up, or we're gonna lose our uh, brand new affiliates or brand new partner status. So uh, yeah, everyone, thanks a lot to um, thanks a lot to uh, uh, to everyone who's here. Uh, you, it would be a colossal help if you could share the stream on any social medias. Sirock, uh, thanks a lot for the uh, for the subscription. Um, yeah, it would help a lot if you could share the stream with whatever social medias you have. Uh, the more <coughs> basically the more viewers we get at one time, the more likely it is for anyone to find our stream on Twitch because most of the time people find a stream on Twitch because at the top of a list sort of by number of subs. So if you can, so if you were if you were able to get even five people, it could per, it could help keep folks interested for the entire rest of the stream. All right, so let's get back to here. We're doing the project. So we're not doing the mechanical keyboard project today because that has nothing to do with wearables. I'm building a wearable breadboard board for our Hello Wearables contest. Yay! There we go. Things is indeed sponsoring this stream. No, yeah, if you do anything with 3D models, uh, hang on one sec. Yeah, uh, if you do anything with 3D models, if you print other people's 3D models, if you make them, uh, it doesn't even matter if you print them, right? Like, if, if you just, uh, you know, are a 3D artist and you want to share your work, head on over to things.com. You can upload your file in, like, three clicks. And, uh, yeah, it, the thing searches all kinds of 3D printing sites, so even if they don't have it, they're going to point you to whoever does. And unlike other sites, they don't charge for any model at all. Everything is free. And, uh... What else? Um, oh yeah, and they don't make you wait five seconds to watch an ad like other sites. So yeah, things.com has been super helpful. Thanks a lot to things for making all this happen. So I should probably grab the link in a second. Uh, let's see, this stream, uh, Hello Wearables contest are sponsored by things. And I have to find my link. I, I, I really need to like they they sponsor so many episodes. I there's no reason why I don't like have a hotkey set up to 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 paste their link except for except for just being a uh, there's never having enough time to prepare everything the way I'd like it to. I also last I promised uh, Brooke and Brooke's sister and my sister in law last night or that I would make them some chili last night because I haven't cooked anything in almost si like six months. So, yeah, I was up late last night making a big old pot of chili while well, the video rendered. So, let's see. Uh, we're going to go to YouTube. Someone asked me... Uh, studio, yeah. Someone asked me... Uh, I, I, sorry, I missed who it was. Uh, why don't you stream on YouTube? Well, for one, you have to choose between YouTube and Twitch. You can't really stream on both. Uh, you have to... Uh, I mean, YouTube is okay with you restreaming, but Twitch isn't. So, if we want to take subscriptions, we got to go exclusive. And on top, but like at the end of the day, the main issue is that people on YouTube want to watch videos and people on Twitch want to watch streams. And uh, doing, uh, giving them, mixing, mixing the peas and the, then the carrots just doesn't give anyone what they want. Everyone comes away feeling, feeling unfulfilled. So, and I want to make everyone feel good about their decision to watch my channel. So we're going to do that. Uh, let's see. Oh, okay. So, oh man, I have a little, little little story time while I while I find this. So, YouTube lets you uh, basically YouTube lets you pick um, 
uh, like default information on your videos and and uh, on your videos as they upload. But you have to fill like if you want to use that feature, you have to put in a title and description. There has to be a default title and description. And uh, what's funny about this is that I decided to make my default name um, a default stream name something a little risque. And uh, well, the videos were getting. Oh, the videos were getting demonetized before they were even up. Uh, like, basically, I would like leave it to upload, and then come back to it, and it would already be demonetized because of the default, because uh, of the uh, the default title. And uh, I thought it was really funny. So what happens is like if it gets if that happens, you still need to actually release the like if you want to get it lifted, you have to release the video, and then file for manual review, which can take anywhere between two weeks and never. Um, so yeah, I end up having to like for a bunch of times like delete the video and re-upload it. It took me a while to realize that it was because of the default title. Uh, I thought it was I thought it was something else. Uh, yeah, let's see. Visit them at there we go. All right, so we got the contest. We got all right. I think that's uh, I think that's it. Oh, okay. So today, uh, yeah, we're gonna make a. Making a wearable breadboard so Zach can enter his own Hello Wearables contest. So this contest is uh, just make a wearable, make it 3D printed. It doesn't have to, the, the wearable doesn't have to be a wearable technology, right? Like we're not making a wearable computer today. I'm literally just taking a breadboard and making it wearable. Uh, so you can make cosplay, you can make fashion stuff, you can make a wearable computer, like the one I'm, uh, the one I'm wearing here. It's, that's, that's, uh, that's what you make is up to you. Uh, it doesn't have to be entirely 3D printed, although you will get bonus points if it is, but if what you want has, you know, a breadboard in it, or, you know, some, I don't know, like, fabric or something, then, you know, knock yourself out. Uh, and it doesn't have to be a wearable for humans either. You can make it for pets as long as it's consenting and alive. The, whatever, in order for it to be a wearable, it has to be on a consenting living creature. Uh, yeah. So uh, yeah, uh, that contest ends on the 9th, and um, I just realized that I don't even, I never even switched my loop deck off of Premiere mode because I was editing video until late in the night. Please switch to OBS. Thank you. So let's see, that's not what we want at all. I mean, it is, but not quite now. Uh, that's not what we want either. There. Uh, what's going on here? Ah, uh, that's why it's not working, because it's unplugged. It's, isn't it strange how all these electronic devices need, need power? I thought everything was going to be, like, wirelessly powered... You know, like the like the the microchips included in the the, the so-called COVID vaccine. I've had that. I've had the COVID vaccine for ages, and no no one has tried to control my mind even once. I am so disappointed. I I thought I thought I would already be like losing hours of my life, and then discovering evidence that I've been underground worshiping lizards. Let's see, is this is this working? What's what's going on here? Why is none of my why is none of my stuff working? Basically, I want to I want to show you folks the prize. Keep your keep your eyes on the prize in a in a manner of speaking. Ah, oh, why uh... There we go. All right, so we've got our lulz bot. How about this guy? Is this gonna work? It never. Why is this thing? Ah, because the HDMI cable's not plugged in. I feel like I have this problem every time. I have a, I, there we go. I have like a pre-flight check, but it has so many items on it that I just never use it. So that I always end up starting the stream forgetting uh, to do something or other, because there's so many things that I can't keep on top of the list. All right, so yeah, this is a Lulzbot Tez Sidekick 747. It's a $1,500 3D printer. I've configured it custom, custom for uh, viewers of my channel and for viewers who are interested in making wearables. It's got a rather large build volume. It's very quick. 
Uh, it's got a 1.75mm hammer and nozzle, which prints all kinds of stuff. It's particularly good for flexible filament. And this is today's prize. Or this is the, uh, the speaker's prize. Oh, wait, wait, what? Why, is, why was the intro music going? Why, why was that? Why? I, I'm so confused. Why was that happening? Um, yeah, that's weird. Anyways, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I've completely lost my train of thought now. Um, yeah, so this is the prize, 1500 bucks, and you get like 10, ki like 5 kilos of filament from Greengate Filaments. It's PETG. It's great for making, great for making wormables. Super tough. Re oh, it's all recycled, too. I like that, too. Anyways, yeah, so, so, so far no one's entered, and that's ridiculous. Because we're giving away, like, thousands of dollars in prizes. So I figured... If no one's gonna, you know, figured no one's gonna claim the, no one's gonna enter, I'm gonna take the prize for myself. So that's what we're doing today. So a few years ago, I, uh, I should probably adjust this. Well, the camera is not, uh, not full screen, so I don't make anyone vomit. So a while ago, I was, this is a long time before, before I started YouTube. I think it was, it was probably like four or five years ago. Uh, I was invited to Frankfurt to the Node con the conference show, something like that. I don't, I don't know these, I don't know these social things. Anyways, um, I was invited to talk about, uh, you know, wearables. Um, there were a lot of, you know, this is kind of, um, let's just say, uh, there was a lot of anti, uh, wearable tech sentiment, so to speak. Maybe it was, might've been earlier. It's like Google Glass was still around or was still relevant. Uh, yeah, so I was invited to talk about wearables, and that's exactly what I did. I actually used this heads-up display. Uh, that was the first time I'd ever used this heads-up display as a teleprompter. I didn't actually use it as a teleprompter, sort of. It was more that I linked it with PowerPoint so I could look at the next slide and, like, read my crib notes. And that was, that was great. I didn't rehearse for that, like, at all, and I, I, I nailed it. It was, that was awesome. Uh, anyways... That was a lot of fun, and uh, there I met Hannah Perner Wilson, aka How to Get What You Want. That's a really old vlog on how to use Arduino and stuff. And uh, she gave me this. This is a wearable breadboard. It's a it's a tiny mini breadboard sewn into this strap with like Velcro on it, so you can just slap it on and easily prototype a wearable projects. And I really like this idea. Um, yeah, I'm not I'm not as good at sewing though, so I decided for this project. So I decided that like if I'm going to enter this contest, well, I'm only going to give myself this one stream to finish this project. Uh, I don't really have much more time, and I'm sure that plenty of other people watching also don't have a tremendous amount of time. So the point I'm making with this episode is you don't need to you don't need to dump a ton of time and energy and talent into uh, in, into entering this contest. Uh, I'm going to make, hopefully, in uh, only the remaining four and a half hours of this stream, uh, I'm going to make a wearable project and enter it in the contest, or at least go as far as we can. Of course, uh, of course, like, we might, we might have to, might still be printing, we'll likely still be printing after the, uh, after it's done. Um, yeah. So, just as a reminder, you can always hit being contest there we go to take a look at the rules you can also take being sponsored to take a look at things.com uh tinster 747 says need confirmation when you check there are no entries uh i got an email from becky at things yesterday uh yesterday morning telling me that uh telling me no one had entered yet um yeah, she was, she was asking if, like, may, maybe people are, like, hung up on something. Because apparently, lots of people have been visiting the contest. Like, a lot of people have been reading and rereading the rules. A lot of folks have been, have been searching for things on things. Uh, like, I, I would assume searching for inspiration. So people have been, have been interested. But, yeah, it has to have, uh, it has to be tagged Hello Wearable. And it has to be posted to things. Uh, yeah. All the, uh, all the rules are right there. I don't, uh... Let's see, somebody posted exobang github. I don't actually have a command for that. Let me uh, let me just confer let me let me add that in right now. I haven't post I haven't put anything up on, on GitHub in, in ages. And if you're going in there to like look at what my clout is in the open the open hardware community, it's I don't I don't really I don't really control I um it's a way of saying it. Uh, there we go. GitHub. I and check out literally. Well, 
check out literally Zach's projects at there's the URL. And now I need to update the commands command. Where did I put that? To tell it that there are 16 commands now instead of 15. There we go. There we go. So now you can type exclamation point GitHub and uh, there you go. All right. Yeah, I don't really contribute to the open hardware community because, or the open source community, apart from uploading my projects because I just don't have time. Uh, I get, you know, I've had a lot of people. Yeah, a lot, a lot of, I've got, I've gotten a, a lot of comments about the. Uh, oh, hey, we got a little, we got some subscription action. Dave, Dave DeGuy, thanks a lot for the sub. Uh, yeah, I've got a lot of questions about the about the chromance, in particular, like the diagram that I put up. I just don't have, I don't think I'll ever have the time to pull that thing off the wall and make a better diagram. So at some point, I have to hire a technical writer to. Um, uh, to help me maintain all that stuff. Anyways, uh, yeah, let's build a project. So we're going to make a wearable breadboard, and it, in keeping with the theme of this contest, I am going to try to make this thing as, um, as 3D printed as possible. Usually I make my projects with a combination of, you know, like, 3D printing, 3D printed parts and nuts and bolts, but they we're going to try to make this as printed as possible. So, uh, Alien X Droid, thanks a lot for the sub. Hamburger Menu, thanks a lot for uh, for reminding me. I really appreciate it. So, yeah, uh, that's today's project. We're gonna try to make a wearable breadboard. Now, the, it would be fairly easy for me to make this by just taking the um, taking the somatic project and let's see. So, I the easiest way to do this thing would be to take start with a somatic project and just take its wrist strap and you know its its wrist thingy um, and just you know modify it to fit a breadboard, but that wouldn't really be keeping in the theme of this episode, because the point I want to make here is that you don't need to have tons of time, or tons of, uh, or, you know, you don't need to believe you have a lot of skill in order to make a really solid entry. So I want to make something super simple with no electronics and no fancy modeling, and uh, I also want to make it something that I think could get full points and that I think could get full points in the contest and could win it. And uh, Basically, the criteria of the contest, I don't know why this one's all weird and misshapen, it's, it's kind of cockeyed, you see that? I think, it got, I think it got jammed in or something. Basically, all the rules are that I am going to try to make uh, entries for, con I'm going to try to make entries, did I glue this down? Is that why it's so, it's so, so weird? Why, did I, why would I glue a breadboard? That's, oh man, you can tell how often I use breadboards because, uh, Ugh, yeah, there's some crud in there. You can tell often I use breadboards because the uh, adhesive is is all is all crumbling. I don't really I don't really use breadboards very much. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 pretty rare. I'll occasionally I'll like occasionally like I'll breadboard a module, but I don't know. Late, yeah, I definitely I, I tried to glue this together. I don't know why I would do that because it doesn't it doesn't fit properly when it's when it's glued. That's really weird. Anyways, uh, yeah, so we're gonna try to make this thing of as little glue and stuff as possible, and uh, we're also gonna try to use like normally I I you know I have tons of exotic filaments around from a certain episode that's releasing tomorrow, but we're gonna try to refrain from using too anything too crazy. So uh, yeah, there we go. Mm. I've been. Uh, Brooke, Brooke says, "Don't spill Mio on the loop deck." They're not as close to. They're not as close together as as they look. Objects in in Ox camera are further than they appear. Mm. Anyways, yeah, let's get going. So, let's yeah. So let's get going. I should probably close uh, Premiere. Yeah, I'm gonna close Premiere because. Has uh, the latest Premiere Pro? I have to use Premiere Pro Beta because it's the only version compatible with the most recent color, with the most recent Adobe Color Science, or no Adobe uh, Black Magic Color Science. But uh, the most recent version of uh, the beta has a memory leak, and that caused a lot of problems. Uh, nothing's ever easy here. Uh, anyways, let's open up Fusion. More like Confusion, am I right? Uh, Dave Guy asks, what does this wearable you're making do? It's a wearable breadboard, so lets you quickly and easily make wearable projects. So, 
some one thing to think about is features. Like obviously, temptation. You know, obviously, a smart thing to do. Let's uh, toggle. Pardon this guy. You can see what's going on. So, obviously, the uh, smart thing to do here is cut as many features as possible. But again, I also want to make this thing usable. I don't, you know. So one thing to think about is, are we going to add power to this? Are we gonna are we gonna integrate some sort of battery or something directly into the project, or at the very least, a, you know, add a place to mount a battery? So I just so let's see. I I used to have a, a some nice small compact USB power banks, and I wonder if I still have any of those. I got rid of a lot of stuff like that when, like, when we, when we were moving, I, uh, I donated a lot of stuff that could be used, you know, by, by lay people. So that, uh, just to reduce the amount of stuff we had to move. And I think I got rid of most of those batteries. But, uh, let's see, might be in the project bits bin. Oh, here's another, here's another interesting idea for a different project. I've got these, uh, here we go. I got these, these like, cl like clicker things, I think for like entering answers in like college classes. And they're actually, uh, f they're actually like, they run an Arduino compatible, they have like an Arduino compatible chip in there. And somebody actually wrote a plugin for Arduino that lets you just code them. And they have like a, like a dot matrix LCD. And uh, they got a whole bunch of buttons and 2.4 gigahertz wireless. It's pretty sick. So, couldn't just make that wearable, but I don't, that's the type of project, that's the type of thing that it doesn't make, like, it's fine to build projects using, like, old stuff and surplus and whatnot, because it's, it's cheap and, you know, you get a lot of technology for your, for your buck. But it, it doesn't make sense to release projects like that because it's impractical for people to build it. Especially because most people who want to build the project are going to buy the parts as soon as they find out about the project. So you'll immediately cause a run on the market and uh, most people who want to build it won't be able to. So let's see. Oh, we could also make the, uh, also make the, uh, the, the wearable, um, the wearable trackpad. I... I guess we could, yeah, we could cover that. I like the breadboard though. I think we'll stick with it. Let's see. Oh, hey, I didn't even know I still had this. This is a uh, borescope. Maybe we could hook that up to the 3D printer to get a get ourselves a nozzle cam. Let's see, I've got a leap motion in here. We got some keyboards, an old phone, got some creepy Bluetooth. Tracking devices, a tiny, tiny drone. Look how tiny that drone is. It has a camera too. It is the tiniest FPV drone, and it is more or less impossible to control. Let's see. I, I'm sure I have a battery around here somewhere. I think it would be nice to to add power to this because that's something you're like. Every project is going to need power, so it's it's not like we're it's not like we're getting ahead of the game here and solving a problem. Like, you shouldn't solve problems that don't exist, but every project is going to need power. And, uh, you know, like, what's the point of a wearable breadboard without the ability to power it? Another thing we could do is, like, take a USB cable and attach, um... We could build... You take a USB cable and, like, put, like, arm armbands on it so we could run it up, and up a shirt and down onto a belt pack. That's another option for powering it. Uh, I think I already checked through this bin. I certainly did already check through this bin. Let's see. Yeah, I've got my, I've got my, uh, my wearable computer set up now. Now that we printed, we printed the clip a few episodes ago, and uh, that means I can keep an eye on chat even when I'm not looking at the window. Isn't that, uh, isn't that nice? And NL12 says wearable drone. That was actually the original idea for that. Believe it or not. The original, uh, the, the reason I bought that drone is because for a long time I've had this idea of basically a wear, like a wearable drone with a bottom firing camera. And uh, the idea is it would run on, like it, you know, at least this is the, this is the pie in the sky idea. I'm not sure I'd actually implement it like this if I, if I ever made it. 
But uh, basically, you'd wear a heads-up display, or you'd already have a heads-up display on for some reason, and you have this little drone uh, with an, powered by an ultra capacitor on a wearable device. A wearable device would have a slingshot on it. So you can take the drone off, you could fire it into the air with a slingshot, and then it, uh, it immediately stabilizes itself, uh, immediately stabilizes itself and positions itself over your head. And then it just tracks your motion for a few seconds. So you basically get a third person, it gives you a top down, third person view for a few seconds and then automatically returns back so you can catch it and put it in its uh, little base station. So it would be a, a drone that lets you uh, take a quick look, take a quick look around. Yeah, this, this idea I've had for a while, and I'm pretty sure it's, fe I'm pretty sure it's feasible at this point. It, it just has a lot of, uh, Pardon the pun, but a lot of moving pieces. So I don't think it's a project I'll ever be able to actually actually make. Like it's not it's not technically difficult. At one point, the like when I came up with the project, the idea of like the drone itself was the hard part. But I'm pretty sure at this point, the like the drone is the easy part. Uh, the hard part is writing all the code to have it automatically level itself, center itself, uh, stream high enough resolution video that it actually you know is worth using. Yeah. Where did I put where did I put that? Alright, it's probably in here. If Bin has electronic stuff. It's got the tiny mouse from the tiny PC. It's got some USB hubs. It's got a keyboard. I was sure it would be in here. Huh. I guess not. It's got a Raspberry Pi mouse. A raspberry. Maybe it's in here. Let's see, this is PC modding stuff. Wow, that is a lot of Allen keys. All right, well, I guess we're not gonna power this thing. We'll just, uh, yeah, we'll have to rig something up. Ugh. Maybe it's in this bin. This is mostly like redundant copies of like tools and things. Let's see, screwdrivers, pliers. Wow, I have a lot of USB hubs. Holy crap, why do I have so many USB hubs? I never use USB hubs, which is probably why I have so many of them. Huh, I was sure I had a, I was sure I had a USB battery. Well, all right. Uh, at the very least, we can make this, uh, make this thing. Um, yeah, we'll make this thing, we'll build a, if we have time, we'll make uh, arm, an armband. This thing is really itchy. <laughs> yeah, this thing is really itchy. This is going to very much get on my nerves over the next uh, next few hours. Let's see. Maybe I could uh, pull this out, clip this on the back. Uh, anyways, uh, yeah, let's get going. Sometimes, sometimes spending a few minutes searching around ends up being worth it. But in general, I, yeah, in general, I try to go to kind of ridiculous lengths to avoid ever having to search for anything. So if I don't find something in the first few seconds of looking for it, it I probably don't have it. I try to keep the workshop. Well, I'm not. I'm not going to go so far as to say that I keep it organized, but I, I at least try to try to limit the mess. All right, let's get this thing clipped on. It's itching me a lot, but I'm just going to have to suck it up because no one who wants to watch me fidget. All right, how are we doing here? All this, all this moving around is going to cause. Uh, yeah, you know, all this moving around is pulling on my wires. I didn't have time to properly gaffer tape everything. So, anyways, uh, yeah, let's get let's get going. Uh, we're going to need. Here we go. We got caliper. So um, yeah, let's uh, let's build this thing up. Let's uh, let's build let's build let's build this guy up. <coughs> oh, pardon me. Oh, it smells like a million degrees in here. Dog's been 
Puppy's been losing his mind being stuck in the crate during uh, entire streams, so uh, I've been letting him out. But that just means he'll come in here and he'll come in here and wreck and wreck house. So now we have the door closed, and it's got to be like 80 degrees in this room. There's there's so many things producing heat in this in this workshop. It even with the door open and the air conditioner on full blast, it's like. Like, it'll be like 75 plus degrees in here, but with everything closed, it's it's crazy hot. Yeah, if if I had been on the ball, I would open the window. But, can't do that now. Okay, so let's let's figure this out. Pardon, the easiest thing to do to, uh, to lock this, easiest way to lock this in place would be to just basically try to get a tight friction fit. And I uh, see, like, the breadboard has these little, uh, in a second, there we go. Breadboard's got these little notches here. Yeah, there we go. These little notches uh, that other so other breadboards can snap into that. We can try to replicate that. Although I think that might be a little too aggressive. Like I don't, I'm not sure a 3D printer will actually be able to make something like that. So uh, let's go back to here. So I'm thinking we just try to get a tight friction fit. And uh, yeah. I guess we could always glue it down, right? Like it's, it is just a, yeah, like it's got, it's got self-adhesive, even if there's not a lot of, not a lot of stick left in it. So I'm thinking we'll just try to get a tight friction fit and, and glue it down. Like my monocle in that episode, oh man, that, uh, I really wanted, one of the things I wanted to do was like make a, uh, make like a Void Star Lab extended universe, right? Like a, like a Void Star Lab cinematic universe. Sort of like, uh, um, I'm trying to think of a channel that didn't, I'm trying to think of a channel that, like, didn't, like, commit literal crimes against its employees that went out of its way to make an ex extended universe, but I'm, I'm drawing some blanks. Uh, so, I was, basically, I was originally going to, uh, to do that, hopefully with less crime. You know, make, like, add, like, a bunch of characters, including time-traveling gentleman Zack, but... Every time I've tried anything remotely like it, those parts of the videos tank so freaking hard. People just are not interested. I think they're. I think everyone's just too rational to uh, to be into that, that that kind of crap. So let's see, fifty five millimeters, give or take, by eighty four ish. Not not counting the little little nubs. Yeah. Oh man. I'm talking, of course, about Channel Awesome, by the way. Like, oh man, if you don't, if you ever watch, like, if you watch, you, if you like my stuff, you've probably, back in the day, you probably watched, like, Nostalgia Critic and whatnot. Look up how they treated their employees. It'll, it'll boil your blood. Yeah. That, what a, what a, what a, what a bunch of scumbags. I'm glad, I'm glad Lindsay Ellis got out of that. She, she seems like, uh, yeah, like the Channel Awesome crew, she, like, she's the only one whose career is still doing well, right? Like, is anyone else, is anyone else from that? Like, Spo Spoonie's gone. Uh, thankfully, all the, thankfully, like, you know, the, the, the nostalgia critic folks are gone. Uh, yeah. Aunt Lindsay Ellis made it. She, she, arguably, she's doing, arguably, she's, she's in better shape now than back then. Definitely more, uh, definitely more influential. So let's make, uh, so I'm thinking here, we'll make a little tray, right? We'll make a little tray for this, little lips coming off the side, and uh, we'll round the bottom so it can fit on one's arm. And uh, yeah, then we'll make our, uh, we'll, make, we'll make our straps, I think we'll attach them in with maybe a paper clip, or yeah, like maybe like a paper clip or something. Um, See, Dave DeGuy says, wasn't Machinima doing that to their employees? They could. Machinima's got a bit of a bit of a shady past. Although Machinima was a fairly large enterprise. I I, I don't actually know. I need, I need to I need to look into that. Machinima was fairly large. They they did drop a bunch of employees, but or they did drop a bunch of creators, but a lot of those creators deserved it. There were there were a lot of there were a lot of jerks on the internet. I don't know where they're all coming from. Um, anyways, yeah, we'll round the bottom, we'll add some way to put some straps in, we'll print the straps out of flexible material, we'll print the other, uh, the other, the main part out of rigid material, and, uh, Bob is your metaphorical uncle. Actually, Bob, Bob is my dog, I suppose. His name is, uh, his name is the Dread Pirate Rob Roberts. 
I think his name was originally supposed to be the Dread Pirate Rob Barks. <laughs> Pardon me. But the Dread Pirate Robert is funnier. Brooke actually watched The Princess Bride last night. If you don't get that reference, by the way, you gotta watch The Princess Bride. It's so... F it's... It's one of the funniest movies I've ever seen. It's so freaking hysterical. Uh, Palador says, They made it so creators didn't own the things they made. I, yeah, but that's normal. Like, t typically when you're, when you're working for an agency or a network, uh, you sign over the rights. You sign over the rights to, to your stuff. Otherwise, it can cause all kinds of payment disputes down the line. Uh, it's part of, part of the nature of that game. It's why I don't work with anyone in that respect. Like, it's why I don't have an agent, why I'm not part of any sort of network, because uh, I am not interested in, in sharing my stuff. I mean, I'm interested in sharing my projects, but, but not, my, not my creative output. So let's start this off by creating a sketch. I don't know why this is running so slowly. Premiere is still open in the background. I see, it never closed. Let's, I wasn't asking. There we go. All right. As usual, it looks like Backblaze is doing it. I specifically, I just cannot figure out how to keep Backblaze from doing updates or from uploading stuff during a stream. Like, I, I just cannot figure out how to stop it from doing that. I even wrote a script that runs on Windows Task Scheduler and every one, every minute, it looks to see if OBS is running. And if OBS is running, it kills everything with Backblaze in it and it's still, it's still, it, it still doesn't work. I, it must be some group policy baloney. Why is, why is Premiere Pro keep reopening itself? I am, how do, how do I, how do I, what do I, what am I going to do here? Uh, how do I close, uh, what, what, the option used to be like, like end pro, end process tree. So something here is, uh, something here, it keeps reopening it. Yeah, I see it's, it keeps reopening. I don't know why that is. Uh, maybe it's me Media Encoder might be opening it. I think it, I think it finally, I think I, I think I finally killed it. All right, maybe it was, yeah, maybe it was the Media Encoder, um, maybe it was Media Encoder, uh, reopening. A do, a doobie. No, oh, is this, is this an OPSEC problem, like showing you what processes are running? I don't, I, I doubt it. If anything, it's probably the opposite, because you, you, you could notice something going wrong. Uh, CXOB23 says, Linux users laugh as we kill our processes without mercy. That's a little too much power for some people. I've, I've killed, uh, I've killed a disk by killing something dash nine before that should not, that should not have been killed that way. I once corrupted a, a file system. I think it was, uh, what was it? I forget, I forget why. I forget why that caused it to, to get corrupted. I think it was, trans I think it was like moving a lot of, I was, I was like moving a lot of data or like syncing something and I, I set it up wrong. But I think like whatever I had done, like behind the scenes, it was using like DD to do the copy, like a direct bit, a direct bitwise copy instead of like, you know, a CP or MV. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, I kill. Luckily, I have I have lots of backups. Okay, so we got our sketch going. So let's uh, let's let's do this. So our dimensions here are uh, give or take. We have about fifty four and a half on this side, about eighty four on this side. So let's make rectangle. Let's make a center point rectangle centered here. Uh, all right. So we had uh, fifty four point five. I, I'm going to be remeasuring stuff a lot because I have I'm, I'm running on basically no sleep, and uh, my working memory is not that great even in the best of times. Um, yeah, I think I'm a fairly smart guy, but uh, I don't um, I don't have any way of backing that up quantitatively. Nessa Dreams asks, "I was gone for half an hour. What did I miss? Nothing really. Uh, I was just just kind of I was searching for a USB battery." Uh, we're, yeah, searching for a USB battery, but we're getting started. So let's see, this is about, we'll take 11 millimeters, and then we'll add an extra, let's call it 
five. Yeah, doesn't have to. This doesn't have to be exact. So yeah, that's on this side and this side. So let's grab ourselves another rectangle. Actually, don't want to create redundant lines, so we'll go like so. There we go. Yeah, so we'll make ourselves a little wearable breadboard. And uh, I think, yeah. The, the, yeah, I mean, one of the reasons I don't use this one right, is because it's just it's just very small. It's this thing is too small to fit. I mean, I could it fit like it fit like a teensy, but it's not going to fit much else. So I want to make a little a little bigger one. Here's something interesting. Do we want to take the power rails off? Because if we remove the rails, it'll make it easier to fit on the arm. Of course, by removing the rails, then we don't have, you know, power rails. Ultimately, we could have the rails off at, like, a side, like, at an angle like that, perhaps, maybe? Uh, no, let's just do the whole breadboard, because then people don't have to mod then people don't have to commit a breadboard. What do you, what do you, what do you folks think? Do we need, uh, do we need power rails, or can we, uh, can we, can we get rid of them? What do you think? I guess for a wearable, it makes sense to not use power rails. To not use voltage rails. So let's see. We had this one that I glued together in my infinite wisdom. Like that one. Yeah, let's let's get yeah, let's get rid of the let's get rid of the rails. Power rails under the wrist. It's probably a bad probably a bad idea. <laughs> Nothing personal. I we could angle the we could angle the rails. There's not gonna be much it's gonna make it harder to keep the breadboard attached though, because we're not going to be able to like brace it from the sides if that's if that's the case. I get it will look really cool though. Like we're just not going to have anything going over the top here. Uh, seems like seems like people want uh, seems like people want angled rails. Let's think. How's the what's the best way of going about this? Um, <laughs> It'll make it, yeah, I mean, angling the rails is going to make everything harder, but it is, it is doable. Let's, uh, yeah, look, look, let's get, let's give it a shot. So if we're going to angle the rails, then this isn't how we want to, this isn't the sketch we want to make. Uh, we're just going to hide it, though, in case we want to backtrack. Instead, we're going to start on this axis, and uh, we're going to make, like, a profile like that. I think that's the, I think that's the way to do this. So let's see. Do, 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 do. So yeah, uh, if you have your own wearable project, definitely enter it. You can enter projects you've already made. Uh, as long as you have the the only restriction is um, only restriction is you can't up. Uh, we don't want any projects that have already been entered in another contest, just because we don't want to. Uh, it's it's just not a good practice. Like the whole point of this is to get people to make more projects, and uh, I just kind of want to dis discourage the the more mercenary members. Um, but uh, also, we don't want to step on anyone else's toes because you know other most most of these contests are done for for promotional reasons, and you know it's just not nice to to steal other people's thunder. So yes, as long as you haven't entered it in another contest, you can use projects you've made before. Although I will give bonus points if you made your project during a contest. So uh, let's do this. Okay. So this is, let's see, so this is gonna be 35, I think. Yeah, 35 millimeters, give or take. Yeah, let's call it 30, let's call it 35 millimeters. Cause we do wanna make it a little on the smaller side to give, the, uh, to give it room to, to curl over. So let's start by making ourselves a center line. It's easiest to do this if we draw it off the side and then uh, mirror it. Uh, pardon me if it's hard to see what's going on here. Fusion has been fusion fusion has been misbehaving when I change the DPI, when I change the display density. So we're gonna go like like this gonna go up over the side and then we're gonna go back around yeah I think this is yeah, I think this is the best way to do it I gotta use my space mouse so we're gonna have the uh, so we're gonna have the power rail here we're gonna have the main part here um, and I think we'll also make some sort of insert see like 
like right there. Yeah, we should probably pull this here. We'll make some sort of insert to help brace this at an angle. I think that's the, the way to do it. 3D Musketeers, welcome to the stream. We were, we were hanging out. Uh, I, we were, I was actually talking to 3D Musketeers just last night. He's got his own. Uh, he's got his own YouTube channel. Let's check that out. So let's. Uh, all right. So let's mirror this. Copy all this. It already picks our mirror line for us. Super convenient. And then we'll uh, let's dimension this up. So we've got. Let's see. We decided that from here to here is going to be 35.5 millimeters so it's, yeah it's called 35.5 all right and then we need the width of the power rail and we're going to measure try to measure all this from the bottom width of the power rail is 9.6 so we'll round that up to 10. and then the height Let's see, this is about nine millimeters. It's actually a little thicker, but um, yeah, I, I don't, hmm, yeah, let's call this, uh, let's call this nine. We, again, we can always, uh, we can always change this. All right, so how thick do we want the walls to be? Usually I make, I start with two millimeters. I think that could be fine. Although we might want to make them a bit thicker because then we can round the corners. It's very important in wearables that you don't have sharp corners. So I'm thinking we'll we'll make this a bit thicker. Uh, three or four millimeters. Because this is going to be hanging off the side here. So uh, let's start with uh, let's start with five millimeters. See how that see how that goes. Alrighty. So. We need to, so let's also model in something for let's see let's also model in something uh, to hold the strap because uh, we're also we're also going to need a gonna need a strap here so we're gonna so first we're going to have uh, this part's going to be rounded right because we're going to want to uh, you know comfortably comfortably put this on our wrist but then where are we going to put the straps I don't want to put the straps on the side because it'll make them very wide I'd, I'd actually prefer if they are under Let's see, dimensions look a little off here. Something, something's not, something's not looking right. Although it could just be me again. Severe sleep deprivation has that effect. Um, three, let's see, three musketeers. Frank's red hot, but with fil fillets, with fillets. I put that on everything. Oh, 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 yeah. All right, I get it. I get it. Is likening. Rounded corners to Frank's Red Hot. Frank's Red Hot's pretty good. I like personally. I like. I like Secret Aardvark. That's my hot sauce of choice. We actually just finished it. Um, actually, just finished off my bottle. I'm a bit salty about that. Okay, so let's. We're gonna set. An, we're gonna set up another line here. We're gonna make this parallel with this. Oh, we should probably probably pick an angle for this shouldn't we 45 seems like the obvious choice but for wearables I typically want this a little shallower so we're gonna instead of making this 45 we're gonna make this 30. Eh, you think that's you know, it's too shallow let's, let's let's start with 45 and take it from there okay we want this to be uh, let's call this three millimeters for strength Right, and we're gonna have our our strap come out over here. Uh, Air Reader says you should try El Yucateco hot sauce. I actually have a bottle of of El Yucateco habanero. It's pretty good. It's pretty good sauce. So let's see how this is gonna work. We're gonna we're gonna round this off as best we can. We want to put a strap somewhere in here right i think so let's so uh, so we're gonna, i'm going to draw myself a a construction line just to remind myself to leave enough oh leave, leave enough room to support everything oh boy it's going to be uh this is going to be a long day i also I still have to write the description to make the thumbnail Oh man, I'm freaking out about the thumbnail. My thumbnail game has been terrible. My click-through rate is is total booty. 
so this is about you'll see why we're you'll see why we're doing this in a sec. Uh, we're going to need let's see so we're gonna add in here we go. So this is where we can put the strap right here. I'm trying to think of, of how to mount the how to mount the strap in. We could also have the strap go in the side uh, or attach on the side, but I don't I don't think so. Helder says have space for a metal plate in the inside, and then use a powerful magnet to hold it in place. I don't like using magnets and wearables, which is weird because I put magnets in everything. But uh, yeah, I don't like putting I don't like uh, putting magnets and wearables because they tend to pick up iron filings. And uh, it's also really easy for um, any wearable attached to the magnet can easily get knocked off and you don't notice it. I've actually lost a number. I've, I lost a Twiddler keyboard, which is a which I which is a pain because that was like two hundred bucks. I lost a Twiddler keyboard. Uh, I lost. I almost lost part of this a smartwatch. Uh, I lost. I've lost all kind. I've lost a battery. Uh, all these things because they were attached to my body magnetically. So, so let's see, we also want, all right, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna put this tangential to here. Can we do that? Yeah. All right, then we're gonna make this guy parallel to here. So, yeah, is that, is that how, we wanna, how, how we wanna go about this? How thick do, are we gonna make the strap? Uh, probably gonna make it five, five millimeters thick, or you think that's, you think that's too much? Three, four millimeters, three, probably three and a bulb at the end. Bulbous, three and a bulb at the end for uh, uh, you know, so we have enough enough plate enough room to to put the the paper clip or or whatever through. Uh, I think it's probably the way to go. Yeah. So let's call this from here to here three millimeters. Let's call it, I should probably make it bigger. We'll make it four, but we'll make the strap itself three. All right, so this looks all right. We'll, 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 we'll miter this off. No, let's actually do that right now. Ah, uh, nah. So I think this, I think this will be a, I think this will be a good start. So let's uh, just mirror this over. Like so. All righty. Finish that up. Okay. So then we're going to extrude this out. Let's extrude it out to. So we got. Uh, so this is. This is weird. I thought I. I thought I measured this to a different amount. Maybe it's. All oh, right. It's tapered. You have to be careful here. It's drafted to make it easier to knock out of the mold. So this is eighty-three millimeters. Let's go like this. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to hit extrude, and we will extrude. No, we definitely don't want to extrude that. So extrude these parts. Uh, we'll do this symmetrically so that it stays centered, and total distance is going to be 83 millimeters. Let's just confirm that. I don't trust my my working memory at all. 83 millimeters. Okay, cool. And then we'll add, let's see, we'll extrude again. Uh, we're gonna do the same thing, except this time we're going to select all of it. We're gonna do uh, symmetric, starting from an object here, and uh, we'll call this five millimeters. Minus five, I guess. going on here oh oh I thought it would do two uh, all right never mind uh, two sides then uh, I guess okay. oh wait no this isn't gonna work all right so we want we're, we're gonna have to do this in in two passes or I guess we could just mirror it yeah let's mirror it I just realized uh, we're gonna want to add a little more a uh, little more a little more geometry here there we go. So this is going to go on top. All right. There we 
we are. Okay, so we just, I just want to add, what I'm doing right now is just adding a lip to keep the, uh, to keep the end in. All right, so I keep forgetting how to, how to construct, hmm, let's see, forgetting how to, how to make this, uh, to split that angle, the angle of the dangle. Oh man, I used to, I used to know how to, how to construct this. Here we go. So this is parallel. We want this line here. Oh man, it's been been so long since I did uh, since I had like drafting drafting class and I learned all these constructions. There we go. Let's see. So this I want to make a construction line here, and I want to make a construction line here, and then all we have to do is make those equal, and that will always bisect that angle. That's the that's the phrase I was looking for. There we go. See now it's now it's black. It's fully constrained. So uh, let's then switch off making construction lines, and uh, let's drag this out a little bit. I want this to be bigger. What's going on here? Why can't we make this? Why can't we make that longer? We, I mean, the dimension, the dimension there doesn't matter. We will eliminate it as soon as we can. But yeah, this, so this will make a make ourselves a lip. Uh, I could have we could have offset stuff, but uh, I, I I'm getting sick of offsetting. It, it it seems to cause more problems than it than it solves. So we should we've done a bunch of work here. So let's save this. We'll put this in my warbables my warbables folder, and uh, we'll call this wear a breadboard. Because that's how the project, that's what the project is called. The wear breadboard. What? I, didn't, I, barely had, I, I barely had time to come up with the idea. I'm not going to spend much time naming it. Okay, so uh, now we, now, all right, so now that we have that lip on the side, uh, we will simply uh, mirror. We're going to mirror the feature that we just created. There we go. All right, so this is the basic. So this is the basic shape here. We're going to need. Let's uh, let's hide this. I don't think we need any more. We got the we got our cutouts and stuff in the bottom. Maybe we should fill it this before, before, uh, before we forget. Just want to knock the knock the edge off. Hmm. This thing would be much easier to. Let me think here. This thing would be much easier to print if we were to cut it in half and attach it with fasteners or pegs. So I think we'll do that. But we'll do that afterwards. Pardon. It's it's generally a good idea to like any concessions you make to make it easier to print. It, it sometimes helps to do those at the end, because uh, then you, you don't have to worry about editing it later and you know causing timeline problems and all that. Okay. So now we have a basic wearable breadboard. We do want to add. Uh, cutouts for the little tabs. So let's get back to get back to doing that. So let's create ourselves a sketch here. Uh, we're going to project. We're going to project that that geometry. So I think before we figured that this was 11 millimeters from the top. There we are. Let's see. 11 millimeters. Oh, that's now it's only giving me 10. What the? Nope, definitely 11. And then we'll make the cutout like five wide. We can. We'll, we'll adjust this afterwards. So let's let's get ourselves oriented. So this is the top. Ah, oh, this came out kind of a weird orientation. Let's see if we want this front like that. All right. So we're definitely doing this on the right on the right side. Okay. So let's cut ourselves out a rect a little rectangle here, five millimeters down, then in, and uh, we want this to be eleven millimeters from the top of the breadboard. And how deep do we need this? Let's see, at least one point five. So I'm going to call this three. No, <laughs> uh, there we go, three. Okay, cool, cool, cool. And uh, let's view our origin. We should be able to just mirror this. 
Mm, let's see here. All right, here's so here's here's what we'll do. Let's so this is gonna yeah, it's gonna have to go all the way down. Okay, so let's just extrude this to here, and then we will mirror again. Mirror features, the one we just created, and again, mirror plane is here. And that way, if we change one, we now don't have to go back and adjust a bunch of miters and stuff. Uh, yeah, we'll just round this wherever. And you know, let's actually do that right now. Let's back up a bit. I'll show you. I'll show you why we did that. Because now, let's say we wanted to, you know, miter these corners, right, or fillet them. Let's go with one, two, three, four. Let's fill it by one point two. Done. Where's three? Okay. And now all we have to do is go back to that mirror and uh, the mirror operation, add in the fillet, and there we go. Now we have two of them. So let's do the same. Oh, we missed. Uh, we missed one. <laughs> we have. Uh, we have the the one at the bottom here. Actually, on both. Huh. That's interesting. Can we mirror that as well? Yeah, we definitely mirror that. So let's go back to our sketch. And uh, let's add that. Let's add that in. Let's make sure we're all we're all lined up. Shift that over so you find people in TV land can actually see it. So let's see. That's in the neighborhood of two millimeters off from the side. All right. Uh, I guess it's 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 close enough to dead. Yeah, I think it's about dead center. So uh, let's now also project. With using construction line, let's project the seam. Draw ourselves a construction line between them, and uh, let's see center line here. And uh, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna draw. No, not a construction line. Uh, we're gonna draw. We're gonna draw our tab. This is supposed to be perpendicular so let's make these perpendicular all right we want let's see we're going to draw let's move this move this out of the way first all right so here's what we're going to do we're going to put ourselves we're going to put a point there we go at the center line and then all we got to do is make the center point here coincident with our center line and then we just set an equals we just set equals constraints to make this tab the same size as our other one and that way we have fewer and that way uh, we have fewer things to keep track of. Fewer things to forget to... Fewer things to forget to do. Alright, so here's, here's, how, here's how we're going to handle this. Alright, we're going to view our sketch again. Uh, we're going to extrude. Alright, so... Let's see. Oh yeah, we don't want... Alright, so we have to do this in a separate operation. So let's extrude uh, this tab we just created uh, down here. And then in our fillet operation, let's fillet this the same way. Gotta love that parametric design. So yeah, this gets mirrored. And uh, now we're just going to, where is this? Uh, Want to mirror again. I don't, uh, I don't think the features, uh, I'm not sure the features are what we want, but let's give this a shot. Let's see what happens here. Yeah, I see a copied geometry it shouldn't have copied here. So instead of copying features, let's copy, let's copy faces. Should have about the same effect. Although this, this does mean, uh, since we're copying faces now, if we substantially change stuff, then we'll have to manually adjust that. So that should give us a perfect copy. Oh, nope, it's hidden. Uh, for me one sec. Uh, how do we want to do this? Feature? Uh, we... Oh, that's weird. What did I change? Why did, why did it, why did it round that? That's really, that's really weird. Why did it why did it round the the top there? That's that's kind of an odd kind of an odd interaction we have. Uh, all right, here's 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 the best way to do this. Uh, we will just 
do this as a separate operation. Uh, yeah. Actually, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll mirror the features. I think we just picked the wrong, the wrong mode. Yeah, so I think for, we want the optimized option. I think that'll work. What, what happened? Oh, right, it just copied the, the fillet. All right. That's really, why does it keep doing that? That's, that's super weird. Oh, Fusion, you so crazy. Let's, uh, let's, let's do a separate fillet operation then. I, I know I deleted the thing that I was think, doing the thing with the thing. I, I know. All right, so let's copy this, or let's round this, 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 and this. Again, 1.2. That's, what's, what's going on here? What did, I, what did I select that I shouldn't have selected? All right, and then over here, copy this and this. Why, why is it rounding it? What the hell's going on here? That's so weird. That's so bizarre. Yeah, let's, we can clean up, we can clean up the HUD. Uh, let's see. Unfortunately, I have to like I have to keep the picture in picture. You're not gonna be able to see what I'm doing half the time, because not 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 everything. Uh, I guess we'll just we'll just fill it separately. I think that's I think that's the way to go here. So, uh, what's what happened here? Features, all right, we're gonna, all right, here's, here's what I'm gonna do. We're just gonna, gonna move this over. We're just gonna, we'll, we'll just copy this, this part first, and then we'll just, we'll just mirror it all together. So look, sometimes, sometimes you can, sometimes we can, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. The important part is that we don't get too caught up doing it properly, and uh, we focus on finishing the project quickly. What? Is this just not, it's just not working. It's a little odd. Why did it copy both of them? All right, well, yeah, we've actually, wait a second. What am I, what am I doing here? That, that part, that part doesn't even have to be copied. Uh, wait, does it? Yeah, actually, now I'm thinking about it. It, it is rounded on that uh, on that other side so yes we definitely want to we want to try to copy that over i don't know why it's i don't know why it's not working though it's really weird i guess another option is we could just ah we could mirror the whole thing so then you can put the breadboard in upside down i don't know why you'd want to do that though ah. sometimes the uh you don't want to give people the extra rope to bring themselves. All right. How do we want to do this? Why is that not working? That's really weird. I don't know why it's copying. I don't know why it's copying that as well. It's very strange. See, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Maybe uh, maybe we just copy the faces again. It's generally better to copy the features if you can. Let's mirror it on our axis here. There we go. And then we'll just round this all ourselves. There we go. The reason, uh, reason I'm rounding it is just to sharp, sharp corners don't often come out looking great on a, you know, 
you generally good idea around corners. With unless you have a good reason to do otherwise. Okay, we have we need one more in the center. Right there. We could add that to our original sketch, but I don't see a reason to do so. Oh. I guess it doesn't I guess it doesn't matter. Alright, let's so let's project that. So we're just gonna put a center line right there in the center. It's a good place for a center line. Alright. Okay, uh, we're gonna do the same the same trick here. The reason I'm creating a point, because if we just apply the midpoint constraint, it will put this in the center, it'll put this line in the, the, the center of the wall, which isn't where we want it. So let's put this here and here, and again, let's we'll just reuse our same dimensions. I guess we could at this we could parameterize it, but I, I don't think we're gonna be changing them that much. I don't think we're going to be changing these values that much. So let's roll back here. And, uh, oh, wait, we're definitely going to want to. Hang on a sec. All right, we're going to recreate that sketch because I made, made a little boo-boo. Project that. Again, this is, not, this is not hard. Sorry if you're having, sorry if you're having trouble seeing what's going on here. Uh, Fusion's been acting up. <sighs> Fusion's been acting up when I when I change the DPI, so I don't want to I don't want to risk it today. Got that. We got that, and then let's just set our dimensions. This is five millimeters. Uh, again, what we're doing. So what I'm doing today here is we're making a wearable breadboard because uh, we're doing this this Halloween wearable contest, the Hello wearable contest to make a wearable. Uh, you 3D print yourself a wearable. Um, yeah, three print yourself a wearable, put it up on our today's sponsor things.com and, uh, you can win yourself a prize, a, uh, a, a prize package, including a Lulzbot Tez 3D printer. It's pretty sick. It's, well, so, and anyways, so far, no one's entered. And, uh, yeah, I, I like Lulzbot printers. I'll take a second one. And that's sponsored by Lulzbot and Things. Yeah. Check out Things if you haven't already. You've been very good to the channel. Good place to uh, to upload your projects to share with others and to check out projects others have made themselves. So there we go. Slummy Old says no emotes yet. Buddy. You know what? Oh. I haven't published a video in like six weeks. There are higher priorities than emotes. Come on. Give me, give me a friggin' break. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm being, I'm being a little... Being a little facetious, I've been, I have been working as hard as I can to give everyone all the trappings they deserve. I know that everyone who supports Void Star Lab deserves all of the, uh, deserves all the perks that are expected to come with that. And we're working as hard as I can to make that happen. But at the end of the day, the, the, uh, the video has got to come first. Video has got to come first. Nested Dream says community source the emotes. There's this... Having other people do it like is doesn't it doesn't save very much time because remember like I still have to promote it I still have to re-promote it and uh, then we have to collect and judge them and all that stuff uh, yeah so I think this is pretty decent I think this is pretty good let's see some other things let's see so some other things we want to add here are uh, we definitely want to add a, let me think here. We definitely want to put some something to stick our. Uh, we're gonna use a paper clip for this uh, as a hinge, I think. So we're gonna need a hole to shove that in. Why paper clips? Because they are just really cheap, and it's likely that people already have a couple. It's likely that people already have a couple sitting around. I, I generally use that or, or coat hangers. Uh, yeah, we should. We should should do like emote contest i there's a, there's also a limited number of things i can promote at once and i am just not making i'm not making enough videos that i can easily promote multiple things so yeah got to promote the contest although i don't i, I can't I, I couldn't even promote the contest in the in tomorrow's video cuz uh, i think 1. 
two five will do it. We don't want to make this too much. We don't want to make this much wider because uh, we do want this actually to be a tight fit. So um, yeah, yeah, I couldn't actually promote the contest in tomorrow's video because uh, I was, you know, like the video is sponsored by E3D. They gave me the printer, but I also got help from Micro Center and Matter Hackers to get more filaments because uh, these filaments are extremely, trying to get every filament is extremely expensive, especially these particular ones. So that was just that plus the usual, you know, remember to subscribe, I stream on Twitch. It was too many things to promote. So I couldn't even promote the contest. I don't even think I promoted the streams. You gotta, you can't, you can't, you can't call too many actions. Uh, you can't, uh, you can't call too many actions or uh, people will lose their patience. There's a, uh, oh man, I forget the, I forget the name of the, there's some show on, there, there, there was a show on YouTube, I think it was about cakes, that literally died, more or less, because they called to action too many times. I'm convinced that's also kill. that also killed, uh, oh, what the heck is it called? Um, uh, quarter, quarter Digital. I think it, if, if it didn't outright kill them, it at least severely damaged them by calling too many, calling too many actions uh, during their, uh, during their, during their videos. What do you think? Oh, it looks all right. Should we do, a, should we do around 20? So that's going to give us 30, 20, and 30. I think, I think it's 15 is fine. All right. And that'll just uh, reinforce things a little more. Let's see. All right, we're gonna have to round round all this stuff off. But yeah, this is basically gonna give us more. This is going to serve two purposes here. Uh, it's gonna give more. Oh wait, I'm using the wrong tool here. So this is to help hold the wrist strap in place, give us an extra point of support. The reason why I'm putting this in the middle is because it's just more. Uh, let's see. It's easier to. It's just gonna be more supportive and be less likely to bow in the middle. And also, if people don't have long paper clips like this one, it'll let them use short paper clips. Remember that uh, everything that stands between, whenever you want someone to do something, right? Everything that stands between them saying, for the first time, thinking, I could do this, and them saying, it is done, every single thing exponentially reduces the chances that they'll actually follow through with it. So, if you want people to build your project, you gotta make your project like, Every, any any possible anything that could ever go wrong, like having the wrong size paperclip, you gotta get like if you the more of those you can you can file off, the more of those you can polish off, the more likely someone is to build your project. At the end of the day, if you're sharing something, you're you know, I assume you're sharing because you would you would like people to make it. All right, so we're having some having some trouble. Uh, I can't round that. Ah, oh, that's interesting. I can't round that. But we are going to. We're we gonna. Are we gonna need to round this actually? Because I don't think we're. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna have to, have to round that. So let's see. Yeah, we're not. We're not. We're not gonna have to round that bit right there because uh, we're gonna have a strap there. The strap will cover that that corner. What we do need to round though is this crease right here. Yeah, we gotta. We gotta round off that. Does two work? All right. Because if that's the case. Or is three work? Because that's the case. Let's do this here. Uh, why do we want to round that crease off? Because any crease, see, you see how it's here. Let me let me get this front and center. See how it's folded in on itself right there. Uh, let's take a actually. Let's do a section plane. There we go. All right. So you see that 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 crease right there. Uh, we want to avoid anything like that in a wearable because it'll collect dust. It'll collect grime. What's going on here? Yes, we don't want to. We don't want to make our anyone kind enough, and to um, we don't want we don't want to make anyone uh, kind enough to make our project grimy. There we go. All right, that's looking pretty good. It's looking pretty good. Okay, so we got some uh, we got some overhangs here. I think here. Let's see, 
orientation we're gonna so another question is what orientation are we gonna print this at so we have a few options here one is we could slice this into three parts that glue together um, another you could let's see uh, glue that together another is we could draft these here so that they print with an overhang I'm thinking we'll slice this in half because otherwise we're gonna have a ton of support material here and uh, yeah Minimize. We also so all right. So here's. I just realized something. We made a made a boo boo. Uh, Marty fourteen forty says I spent 100, 100 channel points just to highlight this message. Well spent, presumably, sir. All right. Well, first first off, we gotta cut that. We gotta cut this part out here. There we are. Yeah, we have to cut this part out here so that we can we don't you know scratch our our viewers. Okay. So here's what we here's here's what's going on. We can't print it. All right, so if we print it this way, right, in this orientation, it's going to have a ton of support material in here, and it's going to take ages to print. If we print it like this, then there's going to be support material touching the user's arm. It's going to scratch their arm up, so that's not also not acceptable. If we print it like this, it'll take a long time. There'll be a lot of supports, and also our uh, dimensions will be off. So it's likely that this will stick out a little too far. So the best thing to do here is to slice this up into pieces and to uh, you know, print those individually. So the question is, where do we want to actually perform the slice? I'm thinking we do it right in the center. So that means if that means we should try to draft. Here we go. So here, let's 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 give this a shot. We'll pull in this direction and uh, let's just make sure that this will work. Try to do a 45 degree angle. We're gonna have to build the same detail into uh, into the strap, but I don't think that will be uh, I don't think that'll be too uh, too hard. Alternately, we could print it with this side down. Yeah, no, it's gonna give us we're gonna have too much to support. Okay, so then let's draft uh, this as well. Boom and boom, cool. Okay, so let's hide this. Uh, we gotta round all this off now. Uh, we really want to round. We're going to all right. So this is gonna print with sliced in half with each piece, piece resting like so. So we have to make sure that everything on this side, right, we have to make sure that um, we round off everything on this face using uh, chamfers, not fillets, because remember round corners uh, print, you know, round edges don't print well, like they have an overhang that's too aggressive to print. So we have to make sure it's all 45 degree angles. So let's, Let's uh, let's do a little. Let's, let's 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 go to work here. Let's make everything nice and rounded and fuzzy. Got to try to make this. Let's see. Hmm. Could could you like so? It's not going to help though, because remember it's going to stick out. Uh, all right. So we've got our rounded our rounded edges right there. Let's round uh, these as well. Yeah, there we go. Got to make everything nice and friendly. As for these, what do you think? Like five? Will five work? Four? Oh, I to put this into gaming mode. I think four is the way to go. Let's go four, 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 and four. Gotta, gotta keep a. Uh, you, you gotta, you gotta think about what's comfortable for the for the uh, the user. Another thing we should do here. We'll make this a separate operation is uh, we should round this off internally because uh, then it won't slice through the the the, the, uh, the adhesive backing e pun man says gotta burn my three k points somehow what are the points how does that work like do i do i have to it does do do i like have to implement some sort of like point sync like do i have to switch stuff on to like give people uh uh to give people something to spend these on we need a we need a resource sync Yeah, Rook has spent a hundred whatever to say my face is a butt. Channel points. Introducing channel points. Watch Zach Friedman earn channel points. Unlock rewards. Learn more. Uh, your message is showing up green, by the way, if you're if you're curious. Channel points for viewers using an earning for streamers. Channel points and management. Enable the points. Customize. We can customize them. Manage rewards. Oh, let's take a look at that. Right, let's move. Let's drag this over here. Go to our let's go to our dashboard. I'm actually gonna put this over here. I don't know if there's any opsec to worry about. Uh, 
how do I do this here? Channel points are available to all Twitch affiliates and partners. Oh, that's why I didn't know about it, because it's brand new. Um, hamburg click the hamburger icon. Go to channel points. I could totally eat a hamburger right now. Uh, where's channel points? Safety center. What's that do? Creator camp. Oh, no, they're going to send me to the camps. Streaming tools. I guess this is... Oh, viewer rewards? Is that... Oh, yep, there we go. Channel points. All right. Smart costs for single rewards. So we can have us set things automatically. Viewers can crowdfund big rewards with channel points. Price them high, last longer, and encourage more precipitation. Channels with customer rewards have double the point redemption rate. Ah, what do we... What do we do here? How... Huh. Oh, like when you hit a certain number of points. It, oh, it can make achievements. Ah. Unlock a random emote. Send a message in sub-only mode. Ah, you can unlock emotes. What's this last one? Modify a single emote. What does that mean? I don't want to modify an emote. What the heck does that mean? I can't let you... I can't let you people modify the emotes. You'll, you'll, you'll put something up that'll get me banned. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so we don't need to worry about that corner there. Um, should probably, let's, let's see. Also want to round that. Will it even let us? I guess it will. All right. All right. So, yep, we're going to round off uh, this here just to make it a little easier to, a little, uh, a little easier to print. Oh, another thing. We have to, we should probably round off. Yeah, we got to round off the corners here. Why, why isn't that, uh, why isn't that working? It should not be created. Yeah. All right, so I'm just going to fill it a little more. All right, we want to round off these edges here, otherwise they will scrape against the wristband and uh, possibly cut it over time. Cut my wristband into pieces. Da -da 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 -da. All right, I think three was too, was too much. Let's make that two. All right, and then finally, uh, we just want to chamfer. There we go. How does that look? I think that looks all right. Just want to chamfer the edges. No. There we go. All right. Cool, cool. Let's save. And uh, now let's make this printable. So we're going to split this. Up. We're going to split this uh, right here, like so. Cool. Uh, we're going to let's go over to bodies and hide one. Let's just take a look at our cross section. Cross section looks all right. Um, all right. So we'll create a sketch on this. Uh, best thing to use, in my opinion, to if you're if you're if you're printing something in pieces, they're going to be held together. Best way to make it super solid. Uh, first, let's project this. Is to use pegs and the best pegs are bits of filament because we are because the viewers guaranteed to have them filaments going to be 1.75 uh filaments are uh 10k points to pick the color well i mean i don't I, then i would need to keep an updated list of of colors and i also don't have a lot of remember i have a lot of different materials i don't necessarily have a lot of different colors uh, the color, in fact, the the, fan, the colored filaments are the first to run down because they're the easiest to use. So let's uh, let's make ourselves. So we're gonna put some two millimeter holes in in here, and uh, we'll be able to just stick a, a piece of filament in there, use it as a peg. So we'll we'll, we'll mirror all this when it's done. Uh, but yeah, so let's just. Go like so, and right angle here and here, and again, make another circle here that is two millimeters, and we'll be able to use bits of filament to to pin this together. Uh, we want to, mm, yeah. So we will finish this. Uh, we'll go to extrude. We'll extrude this and this. 
we, uh, yeah, we want to extrude in both directions. Uh, how long do we want to make the bit of filament? Let's, we could make, we can make it fairly large. Uh, make, but, you know, of course, you may, make it too big and, uh, make it too big and people might snap it off too short. So let's, let's call this 15. And we want to make sure that both bodies are visible so that we cut both bodies. And then we just, hopefully the mirror works better this time. Should just be able to mirror this feature. And there we go. Now we have, yep, and now the two, yeah, now they'll be able to print this in two halves on any printer, glue them together, and uh, it'll be nice and, nice and strong. No fasteners required. So I think this is pretty solid. Another thing to keep in mind is that the two halves are, are different. Uh, you are like, oh, the cro I didn't turn the chromance control on. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Didn't even, didn't even turn that on. Let's, uh, let's do that. Local close. There we go. All right. Now we should be able to control the, control the chromance. I don't, I, I would, I think I need to modify the script. Uh, I, I need to, mo yeah, I, I need to modify the script to, to make that happen. I think. I assume there's an API to read the number of points a person has and deduct from their total. Uh, yeah, I doubt I'll ever have time for that. Maybe, yeah, I, yeah, that's that sounds like it's not a, a particularly difficult thing to do, but because of how little experience I have with, you know, anything web and API related, I I don't I don't think I'll yeah it doesn't seem like I'll like a type of thing I'd be able to practically do, but uh, I think this will do the job. Uh, Oh, made a bit of a boo boo here. The yeah, we made a little bit of a boo boo. Uh, where's that second or hole here? I don't. Yeah, I never. I never punched the. Uh, let's see. Let's go back in through before here. Yeah, I never. I never punched a hole in the. In the in the stuff, okay. So uh, for the, here here, let me let me just let's just let's just extrude this. Show you what show you what's what. Give me give you a good what for. Okay. So for this, we want to uh, we want to extrude the. This is the hole that we're going to shove the paper clip through. So we're going to do two sides, and one of them we're going to go through all, and the other we are not going to go all the way because uh, we want the paper clip to bottom out at some point. Um, otherwise, it'll double the chances that it slips through and falls out. So we just extrude all the way to the end, except we offset it so that it doesn't actually go all the way to the end. We want it to pass through here, but not much further. So let's see. Yeah, the chamfer is causing some problems here, but I think we should be all right. Ultimately, we could just have it punch all the way through. Uh, I think that's fine. Save it on up. All right. Truck who asks if our Halloween if our Hello wearables entry has multiple versions, should we upload them as separate submissions? I got circuit boards lost in FedEx Hell that might not arrive before the deadline. You could feel free to enter multiple projects. It um yeah, feel free to enter multiple projects. Uh if they're multiple variations in the same thing, then I'm likely to judge them together. But uh yeah. Uh, yeah, feel free to enter multiple projects. No matter the circumstances. So let's, I think this is, oh, this is pretty good. Cool. So, uh, yeah, let's get, uh, what do you say we get printing? We'll make one half and uh, then the other. Actually, we should do a little, we should actually do a little slice just to make sure our dimensions are accurate before we spend a bunch of time, before we commit a bunch of time in filament. So let's see. This should be enough. Yeah, maybe we might want to. Uh, yeah. All right. Just uh, just thinking, thinking out loud here.
All right. We want to. All right. So basically, uh, there's going to be a, we're going to have an overhang here, and that is super easy to remove. We just go make this 45 degrees. Uh, here we go. 45, and uh, now we should no longer have an overhang. There we go. Because we mirrored it, automatically propagates, and now we uh, no longer have an overhang. Nice. Should probably round these too, but uh, we can do that later. So let's just uh, let's just confirm. We got three on the side, three on the bottom, two on the side. We have a place to put our strap. Yep, it's nice. It's rounded for maximum wrist pleasure. How tall is uh, actually? Let's let's see. I just want to see how high this arch is. So this is nine, give or take millimeters. Yeah, that'll be fine. All right. Oh, we're gonna is is Charku uh, says Charku says noise. Gonna head home. Upload my first submission. Cool, cool. Glad, uh, glad folks are entering. Never, I've, I've literally never held a contest of any kind before, so I am really excited about this. All right, so we've made a little slice here. What do we have? So currently, uh, yeah, let's see. So in the print, in the little spot printer right now, we currently have some PTG loaded in. Ah. Uh... I have a bit of silk PLA left. What do you th what do you think? Uh, I guess we could try it. It, it might not work because it's been left out so long. But let's uh, all right. Let's give that a shot. So I'm gonna switch over to nope, not there. There we go. Let's take a look at our printer. There we go. Let's take a look at our printer. Can I? Maybe I should pull this back. There we go. Folks can get a good look at the prize we're going to use this today to do some of our printing with yeah this is a this is a pretty sick printer i'm gonna be honest i'm really i'm really stoked about this printer um there we go okay so we'll head over here flip it on so right now it's loaded with petg i think it's it's stuff called this is, um, oh, Z-Glass from Zortrax. Yeah, I was printing, uh, two, I was printing two Benchies for, it's for this, for tomorrow's video. I printed two Benchies out of the same PET, one with fans off, like, basically on, more or less on all the way, and the other with fans all the way off, to show the difference in quality between them. It's actually pretty interesting. Uh, my alcohol is in here. We go. I was using it to to stun a mosquito, make it easier to easier to to catch. There's this enormous mosquito just hauling ass around the bathroom yet yesterday, and I just could not catch it. So grabbed the the isopropyl and gave it a few blasts, so it got it got wasted and easier to it's easier to catch. Oh, check that out! We got the the Patreon matrix is getting reflected in the in the the screen. Mm, it's pretty cool. All right, mosquitoes suck. Yes, mosquitoes definitely suck. Uh, C eight O says silk is great for supports popping off since it's so brittle. Yeah, you can't get supports off silk prints really, really easily. Let's. Uh, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go to change filament. Uh, we're going to unload the filament. It only has settings for ABS and PLA. Oh, that's weird. Did it, did it not home itself. Must have not homed itself. Yeah, we'll we'll give this a. We'll start out with our. Start out with this leftover silk PLA. Uh, this stuff is probably completely waterlogged, but that's that's fine. This is this isn't even like the full print. This isn't even one of the the full prints. This is purely for testing 
purely for verifying the size. So uh, we'll get this thing printing and while it goes, we will move on to making the strap and uh, also design the strap from scratch. This is gonna take a couple seconds, so let's head back over here. Uh, let's see. See, Hipa says, normally I'd try my hand, but I have to save some money for a trip in a month I'm taking. Uh, I, I mean, if you already have a printer, ho like hopefully, uh, if you already have a printer, hopefully you don't need anything other than the printer. Ah, oh, Brooke hates mosquitoes. Mosquitoes are obsessed with Brooke. They, they just, if there's a mosquito around, 100% chance it seeks out Brooke and bites her as many times as possible. I rarely get mosquito bites. I'll probably get 10 over the entire summer season, but Brooke could easily get 10 in a single night. Oh, looks like we're unloading. Very nice. Okay. Filament unloaded. Where did I put the purge filament? Oh, here it is. I was using it for the the Prusa. Haven't been using my Prusa as much. Haven't been using my Prusas as much just because I've had uh, incentives to use other printers. And the tool changer has actually been an all star. I was, I was on this this weekly this bi weekly Zoom hangout with a bunch of three D printing people last night and uh someone else had a tool changer I, I apparently i'm the only person whose tool changer is is reliable uh i've actually had barely any trouble with it get in there jeez please i've barely had any trouble with it since setting it up uh, you know what? i'm just gonna pull this can you see or am i blocking everything pull that out and now we have to load the filament. There we go. There we go. Yep, the nozzle is covered in crud. I was definitely printing PETG. <laughs> it's kind of how it works with PET. It's just it just loves curling back. It doesn't it doesn't want to go to school. Yeah, this purges a lot of filament. There we go. Nice. So we'll give our nozzle a thorough wipe with a paper towel. It's nice printing materials that aren't so hot that the nozzle will burn a paper towel if you try to wipe with one. There we go. Yeah, this thing's got a nickel-plated, I think it's a nickel-plated copper nozzle. It's pretty sick. Not gonna lie. I wish I included a second nozzle in the package, though. Alright. Unload. Very nice. And then we will drop the temperature back down to PLA and uh, get ourselves going. So let's go to temperature. Mm, preheat PLA. There we go. Might as well preheat the bed too. There's no reason why not. Oh, it looks like we got ourselves a sub. Nested Dreams is gifting ten tier one subs to the community. Thank you so much. You've been so you've been super generous to the uh, to myself and to the to the viewers. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Zekipo ran out of filament apparently. Oh no. I guess that will get in the way of your three D printing. If you, run, if, if you run out of filament, I, I suppose that will happen. I would share some, but uh, then I'd need to know your address. That would, that would be creepy. Let's see. Well, while we're waiting, let's get our well, let's get our guide tube back in here. I don't really like this filament sensor. It's uh, it's just hard to shove filament through. So this this printer's got a couple issues, but like. Once it's printing, it's pretty. It's pretty friggin' good. Uh, I haven't. I haven't used the uh, the BQ printer in a while because I have no place to put it. It's so freaking large. It's such a large printer. It's enormous. 
Yes, the dreams. Thank you so much for all the uh, uh, for all the support. Really, I uh, really appreciate it. He, said, he or she or they says, I have to go, but the, here's more subs to kickstart the channel. Good luck with the project, and may someone else try submitting, no matter how small or simple your project. That's also, thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Some kind words and good advice. Yeah, part of why I'm making this project today is just to show that I'm not expecting everyone to, you know, build wearable computers and entire Iron Man costumes. Like, again, the whole point, the whole point of this contest is to get stuff, is to create stuff that... Um, it's great stuff that the community can, can make. At the end of the day, this is all ending up on things, and uh, there's no point for things hosting something if no one's going to make it because it's too complicated. So yeah, the whole goal here is to make stuff that other people will find some use out of. Should be cool enough by now, so let's, let's load her on up. Come on. Yeah, I think this is using a micro switch as... Uh, as a runout sensor, but I don't think they made any sort of like special cover for it. Like I think the film is actually brushing right up against the tab, and it makes it really hard. To, it's really hard for the filament to make it past and then line up with the Teflon tube at the other end. They should really have put like uh, how what do you call it? Like like a chamfer on the inside. So let's load up our PLA. There we go. Let's see if it's so it should it should puff up when it comes out because it is it is silk PLA. But uh, if it crackles too much, then uh, we might want to do the old filament switcheroo. It's crackling means water. All right, it doesn't look like it's crackling too much. Definitely not in the best shape, but I think it should be fine. Yeah, it'll 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 be fine for prototyping. All right, so let's get this going. Let's see. We want this to go here. We want this to go here. So yeah, let's uh, let's do a little let's do a little printing. So we're gonna go and to make this. We're gonna send it over to Super Slicer because that's what we set up. As we set the lulz bot up on. Uh, Air Raider says my audio is doing weird things as a reverb when I'm hunkered down. How are we uh, how are we doing? Is that is that okay? Let's see. Is that all right? It could be maybe some interference. Let me move the let me move the body pack over to my other side. It might be might be picking up some interference or something from uh, being right next to the computer from the heads up display. Oh, that's weird. Ah. Uh... So, oh, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty cool machine. So let's uh, see. We don't not squirt Stephanie. We want to do. We call this. I call this one Squirty Harry. So let's take this and get it to lie flat. We are gonna want a brim. We shouldn't need support material. We're gonna run this with regular old P PLA. PLA with turbo fans? No. We want PLA with regular fans. Uh, put this. Let's move this. Uh, does it matter where we where we? No, it's gonna end up printing the same place, isn't it? So let's let's print a little further back. Level the wear out on the sheet. the The plate for this is uh, is square, so we can rotate it, and as long as long as we don't always print in the center, we can level the wear a little bit. It's a really cool plate. It's like glass with a pe with um. It's glass with a PEI sheet on it, which is a combination I've never used before, and it's it's pretty nice. Like you can't bend it to snap the piece off, and it takes longer to heat up. But there's no chance of it like pull less chance of it pulling the sticker off, and uh, it's just much more much more solid. So I, I like it. So let's see. We we can try to really. So we can speed it up. We can try to really crank this hog and print it full throttle. I don't know how well it'll work. How fast is fast? How fast did I set this? So it's printing at a, between 100 and 120. Oh, look, I guess we'll give it a shot. If it fails, then it fails. I, it, I'm not. I'm not worried about the. Oh, that's weird. We don't. We don't want these. We don't want supports. Uh, I'm not worried about the printer being able to keep up. I'm more worried about the filament. 
All right, well, this is a bit of an issue right here. This is not a lot of, not a lot of plastic keeping this thing together, but let's just, we'll print it and we'll see what happens. Okay, so this is estimating an hour. All right, that's a bit, it's a bit of a long time. It's, that seems awfully long. What's, uh, what's going on here? Why is, uh, why is it taking an hour, especially at such a high speed? Did it possibly get switched back? Nope, it's printing at 0.2 millimeters. Huh. All right, I, look, we, we got to do it. So let's, uh, let's send it. Let's send it on over. It's only 15% infill. Oh, oh, of course it's not make, of course I couldn't upload it to the Octoprint. The Raspberry Pi is not plugged in. Herpity derpity. I unplugged it because I kept tripping over it. It'll probably cause the printer to reset once it boots up. Let's see, let's see if it auto connects. I was having a little, having a little trouble getting it to auto connect. Let's see, unplugging gremlins. H4 says, aren't the accelerations in this type of printer really slow? It's probably the problem. Now well, let's take a look. Printer settings, machine limits. Oh, that seems, that seems all right. Set to 9,000, set to 9,000 millimeters per second, the X, the X and Y. The Z is a little low, but, um, this, yeah, the Z is a little low, but we can, uh, we can change that. Yeah, we might as well, right? Uh, so maximum feed rate on Z is actually really fast because uh, this thing has a belted a belted Z, so we can actually change this. I'm, I'm going to put it at let's 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 put it at 200, 200 millimeters a second on Z. That'll let us hop really quickly. Maximum acceleration on Z. Let's call, let's double this to 200. It, I think I don't actually know what. So this is the default. Their default value is 500. Wow. All right. Uh, I don't want to mess around with these too much. How fast can this thing move? 800 millimeters per second is pretty zippy. I doubt this will speed things up very much. Yeah, it cut, it cut off two minutes. But we're, we basically got that for free, so nice. All right, we should be able to send this now. There we go. All right. We're in business. Hmm. Look how look how quickly that thing that thing moves. Good thing got that BL touch. <sighs> gotta I, I gotta figure out how to speed this up. It's way too way too slow in the uh, way too slow in the mesh leveling. No reason for, for mesh to take this long. So keep an eye on this. Make sure the first few layers go down, and then we'll move on to designing the straps. And uh, again, we don't want to use any fasteners. So I think for the straps, we will... All right, well, we, we have a couple options here for straps. The We can do the... Ex yeah, we got a couple options here. Uh, the first the three of them... Actually, but no, hang on a second. All right, so options for straps. We can use an off-the-shelf strap. I'm not going to do that because I don't think I have an off-the-shelf strap. Uh, second option, we can print out a flexible filament. It's the easiest option, but most people don't feel comfortable. Even though most people have a printer that can handle TPU, most people don't feel comfortable printing in it. Um, we can also make it like a link. Like, you can make it like links. Like a... Like a like a watch band. I think we'll use flexible filament. I think we can use TPU. I don't think that's an unreasonable ask uh, to print the whole th to print that out of TPU. Air reader says can't do induction sensors because it's glass. Is that right? Uh, I mean, you could you could always put like there there has to be some metal in it as a conductor, and you could always like a, just add a like a steel plate. But yeah. I think the reason, I think the reason they're not using, 
Oh boy, here we go. Why is the why is the nozzle parked? Why is the print paused? Who paused the print? Does it think we ran out of filament? Does it think we ran out of filament? Let's see. Oh, there we go. All right, let's keep an eye on this. Engage the baby stepping. That's leveled way too close. It doesn't remember the baby steps between, like it doesn't remember Z height, the Z offset. I mean, uh, between, like when it when it reboots. I don't know what to do about that. All right, odds are we're gonna run out of filament, but that's fine. We have a run out sensor. Yeah, I don't know why it, it paused the... I don't know why it, uh, it triggered the runout sensor. That's really weird. Oh, it looks like it's staying attached. Let's see. Yeah, I can level a little bit higher. All right, so let's let that do its thing. Keep an eye on it. And uh, let's... Get it, um, yeah, let's get working on that strap. How are we doing on time? We still have three hours, excellent. We're probably not gonna be able to print this whole thing today, but uh, nothing stops, I don't think, nothing stops us from just going as far as we can. So let's see. Uh, what do we want, what do we want to keep an eye on? Let's, what do we want to keep an eye on? Let's keep an eye on uh, this, boop. Okay, so, Looks like it's printing all right. I'm gonna close that. So let's make ourselves uh, let's make ourselves straps. So the easiest thing to do here is simply. Uh, yeah, I think it's fine. We keep an eye on that. All right. Uh, easiest thing to do here is uh, just to design around flexible uh, flexible filament. Because uh, it'll be easy to print. I don't think it's I don't think it's unreasonable ask. Because nearly every printer can 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 handle TPU. And uh, making so the the other problem is if we were to make it solid, right? Like if we were to make this like links, we would need to make a buckle as well, and that's just a lot of a lot of designs. Random guy three says, do you have a way to attack strains of filament when it runs out, or what do you actually do when it runs out mid print? This has a this has a runout sensor. So you see that, uh, if you look in the corner, let's see. Uh, if you look in the top left corner, uh, the thing that the filament is feeding into, pardon, is a little switch. So if we run out of, uh, if we run out of filament, it releases the switch and that notifies the printer and it pauses it so that we can swap the filament. I think it tripped by accident. So I was gonna keep an eye on it. Again, this, this, this printer is, is new, I haven't used it a lot, so I don't really know its idiosyncrasies yet. So, uh, yeah. So let's make ourselves a, let's get ourselves a little strap action. Let's do a little, let's do a little strappage. I don't like how close this is, like where the holes are. Well, we'll see. Well, we can always adjust later. So uh, yeah, let's make ourselves a little strap action. Although first, probably want to turn these into a component. Let's create ourselves a new component. I'm gonna call this body, or the uh, body's already taken in Fusion. I never know what to call stuff. Uh, breadboard holder. And uh, let's drag these in there. Just keep our keep our stuff organized. All oh, right, you can only. I don't think we'll need that anymore. I think we discovered last time. Yeah, that you can only move bodies into components when you're at the end of the history. It's really weird. A uh, random guy says, "Oh, you just swap filament, continue the print, the exact place it stopped." Exactly. Yep. So we just throw in a new. We just throw in some more filament and. There we go. We're we're back to, we're back to the races. Looks like uh, not the the quality's not the best, but that's fine. I mean, it's it's 
this is garbage silk filament, so we'll be we'll be all right. Let's try to get all up all up in here. There we are. Wonderful. Let's make ourselves a little strap. Um, alrighty. So, how are we? How do we want to do this? We're gonna start the strap here, I think. Yeah. We want to have our sketch here visible. Huh. Hmm. Let's think. So we can draw our draw our strap. Well, let me let's just try I'm just trying to think the best way to the best way to attack this. I think the best way to start we could so we could either draw it like we could either draw it on profile, extrude it sideways, or we could draw it like like so. I think the two I think both of them are the way to go. I think uh I think the I think the two are the way to go. So let's hide this. Let's get our all right. So we're, all right. So let's see. Uh, we're going to all right. So let's make ourselves a new sketch. Uh, we're going to do this on the X Y plane. We will project here, here, and here. Except we'll make these construction lines. Okay. We can do two at uh we're gonna do two at once or are they gonna be the same? They're probably not gonna be the same. So uh, we'll make them we'll make them separate. And we're also gonna want to project our holes here. Except we don't want those to be construction lines. So let's hide the old sketch. Let's uh let's let's do this. So this we're gonna offset by 0.5. I think that's I think that's fine. What's our uh, let's see? That's making this 0.8 millimeters. It's not a lot of room. Um, but T then again, TPU has excellent layer uh, layer bonding, so I, I think that'll be fine. So let's design this one first, and then base the other one off it. So we'll extend this oh, extend this out by an unspecified amount. We definitely want this to be a tangent. How thick do we how thick do we want the strap? I think we decided before like three millimeters. It is awfully thick. Extra thick. Three millimeters is a bit of a thick strap. Let's call it 2.5. Right. And we're just going to extend this. Uh. Attach these. All right. So this we just want to make concentric with this. Is that is that going to work? Concentric. There we go. And this here we want to attach. I want to be coincident with our line. There we go. All right. So that's our that's our strap right there. Uh, should actually make this a could make this a little thinner. Somebody tried to make the chromance turn black. Dills made the chromance turn black. You can't no, it just turns it off. That's that's how that works. Is this touching? I guess it's touching. Let's just make sure. No, oh, looks good. Hey, so we got ourselves a little strap. Let's put, let's line uh, this and this up. All right, how long do we want this? So that's uh, so this is basis of our strap. How long do we want this? Let's grab something. Wrap it around my wrist. Actually, I should wrap it around my forearm because I have rather small wrists. Because I am a wimpy girly girly man. Yeah, because I'm a because I'm a, a a sigma male. All right, so it's about this long, or around a hundred 
130, give or take. Let's just confirm. Yeah. Give or take. Let's call it 120. Uh, it's really important whenever you're doing anything, when, whenever you're doing anything that requires circumference, right? Whenever you're measuring around something, you always have to measure it. Humans are not, we, uh, we're not capable of accurately estimating circumference. I don't really understand exactly how that works, but uh, for all intents and purposes, everyone is bad at estimating circumference. So uh, yeah, don't, don't, don't chance it. Don't, don't make the mistake of thinking that you're you're better than the average person because statistically you're you're statistically you're you're either the identical or worse than the average person. Uh, so this here, so this here should be uh, about one twenty. Okay. I guess I guess we could make that the same on the other side. I'll, uh, although maybe we, uh, let's see here. Mm. Probably don't need to make the other side that, uh, uh, probably need to make the other side so, uh, uh, long. <laughs> There we go. And let's make this this tangential. Make a right angle. Put it back around. That is a better. This this was a better way of going about it. Uh, we want this to be two millimeters. And I don't think we need, so. So this part's going to be the uh, the buckle side, right? The other side's going to be the whole side. So I don't think this has to be quite as long. I think we can make this maybe like fifty. So, Grab my receipt again. What what's this a receipt for? Oh, this is for uh, the the last client project when I sent it out. Probably want to make this a bit longer. Actually, let's call this call this 80, 80 millimetre millimetres. All right. So let's go ahead and um, create our. Oh, we should. Let's see. Well, we also we also uh, have to leave room for our leave room for our relief here. Uh, so let's see. We're gonna want to re uh, do our sketch, right? But let's hide the breadboard holder and let's open up our sketch again. And because we're going to want to project this. Actually, we don't want to. Project this. We want to, or we want to project it, but we want to make it a construction line because uh, we want to actually offset it a little bit. Point five. Well, I think we can make that work. There we go. All right. So let's uh, let's let's make it. So we're going to. Uh, we're going to extrude. So these parts here have to run the entire length symmetric. So we can't do a distance. So we're going to do two sides. The first, and both of them are going to be to objects. So uh, we're going to do this to here, offset by a millimeter. And the other one is also going to be to an object, except we're just going to make it to here. Again, offset by a millimeter. All right, so that should create new bodies because it's not touching anything. Excellent. And uh, then we just need to, let's see. Then we just need to uh, add the other part that goes inside the watch. So let's get that, let's get that done as well. So let's extrude uh, this, this, let's extrude this. So we're going to start, let's see, how do we want to do this? I think we, yeah, we want to start from here. Actually, yeah, we're going to have to do this in two parts. But they're symmetrical, so we can, we can just mirror it. So let's start from, 
Let's see. Is this how we want to go about this? I think so. So we'll do that. Offset by a millimeter. Minus a millimeter then. And uh, we'll extrude this all the way to here. Uh, we're going to want to get this little bit here too. Ah, uh, profiles. There we go. So they actually join up. Cool, cool, cool. I know this is I know this is intersecting. We'll we'll deal with we'll deal with that in a sec. Actually, we'll deal with that right now. So let's uh, we'll do another we'll do another draft. Another giraffe. How did we uh Oh geez, flying all over the place. When the space mouse turns sideways, all kinds of all kinds of weird crap happens. So yeah. Alright. So we're gonna pull it in this direction. We're gonna pull this face 45 degrees. So it should be parallel, looking good. And uh we also wanna do that as well. Very nice, and hopefully it should mirror without any any option, or any without giving us any guff. So let's do that. I want our last two features. Mirror plane is of course here, and that should uh, do the job. It didn't. Oh, I think it. Oh, it. Ah, uh, I see. I see what happened. It uh, it 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 did copy the uh, did copy the champ the um the draft, but it copied it the same direction. Yep. Zekeepa says, "You know what they say: measure three times and never cut it because of anxiety." Fair enough. You gotta just you gotta you gotta just c commit. That's why I that's why I do stuff like uh. Like time boxing, like I say, like I'm gonna, I'm gonna think about this, or I'm gonna, why, why, why is this never working right? <clears throat> That's why I say stuff like I'm gonna think about this, or I'm gonna work on this for the, you know, in, for the next five minutes, and then whatever we have is what we're going to, is what we're gonna use, because it, uh, it, it limits the damage that limits how limits the damage that anxiety and stuff can do. At the end of the day. Uh, the thing you really got to be, the thing you got to cultivate a fear for is, is never start, is never finishing the project. You can get over everything else, but, uh, let's see. You know, you can, you can fix a mistake, but if you never start, there's nothing to fix. Let's see. Why why is this one cutting but the other one didn't? So we're gonna do join. Uh, we're gonna hide this so it can't cause any trouble. There we go. There we are. All right. So let's. Uh, hopefully we should just be able to draft these as well. Yep. Beautiful. Let's unhide this and just make sure that yep, nice, 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 nice. All right, so we have the ba we have the basis of our straps. So these are very these are very wide straps. Let's see. All right, so these are wide straps. So I think we'll we'll kind of like neck them down. We could make we could make a double strap, but I don't think that's I don't think that's the best. I don't think it's the best way to use our. Uh, it's and then we have to just replicate everything we make. It's a pain in the ass. All right, so I think how 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 wide should should a strap be? I think thirty millimeters. You think this is gonna wobble around too much if it's only thirty millimeters? Maybe we could do forty. So let's see. That's not this much. Another thing we could do is. We could put, we could shift the strap over to one side, like this, which could make it look cooler and also make it a bit easier to uh, keep on your arm. I think that's how we should start by having the strap shifted over to one side. 
then we can always uh, can always play around with it and see what happens. So let's start here. So we'll project this. We'll go, uh, I don't know, I don't know. I, I, well, I eyeball this at first. Yeah, getting, getting over analysis paralysis is, is hard. There's no really, there's no, there's no like, there's no like quick fix. It just, there's, there's no, there's no like quick fix. You just got to stay focused on the project. Got to remind yourself why you're, why you're doing it. All right, is there any particular, does this have to be 45 degrees? So that'll make this a little wide. I don't, I don't think this has to be 45 degrees. I don't think there's any particular reason. Well, let's give it a shot. Let's call this uh, 75. Yeah, make it, so make it look kind of, kind of neat. All right, and look, we'll we'll see how well this we'll see how well this stays attached, see how well this stays on my arm. Alrighty. So then uh, we're going to let's see. So we'll create a construction line from here to here. Then we'll create a center line here. So this is going to be the whole. We're going to have the whole side, and we're going to have the the nub side. All right, one one side is going to have a little nub that goes through, uh, and you know, like a, has a little mushroom head on the end to to keep it in place. And the other is just going to be uh, the holes that it it goes through. Like this is the same idea as the as the somatic. This is uh, the same the same type of strap that I that I put on the somatic. So, uh, yeah, let's move this dimension out of here. Well, now the one thing that'll make this easier is that now there's a slot tool. When I made the somatic, there wasn't such a, there wasn't such a thing as, as a slot. So how, how wide do we want this? Maybe like 15 total out of 45? Third, a third of it. Let's, let's give that a shot. So it's called the 7.5 in this direction. And, uh, how, 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 why do we want this? Maybe like, maybe like three millimeters. Well, maybe like three or four. Let's call it three millimeters. Well, well then, then again, we're gonna have to shove the the thing through it. So it's, I think three and a half. All right. How far do we want this? We don't want it to go all the way up to the end because then it'll be weak. I think twenty is. I think twenty is fine. All right, and then uh, all we have to do, first we should first we should save. We haven't saved in a while, but now let's create a rectangular pattern of this guy going in this direction. How many of these do we want? We'll, we'll bring this almost all the way. Well, we can only go this high, right? Because Otherwise, there's nothing. We can only go this far because otherwise, there's there's nothing for the, the the strap to go into, right? Like, <laughs> there's nothing for the any buckle to go into. So we'll put it over there for now, and uh, let's just keep adding. Let's keep adding positions until we can't fit no more. I think that's pretty. I think that's good. Yeah, I think that's all right. I think this will do for now. All right, so then we will extrude. It would have actually made more sense to here. Uh, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Instead of making the pattern. All right, so we're gonna go back to the pattern. We're gonna go back. To, bring this back to one. Yeah. So we'll get rid of the pattern. It makes more sense to replicate the hole than the pattern, because then if we change the number of holes, we're going to have to manually update that. And we all know that I'm going to forget about that. So this also means that we want to do this in two parts. So uh, let's cut through all. There we go. And now do the same thing in this direction. Cut through, or with this piece, we'll cut through all. And then we'll create a rectangular pattern 
of the feature of the, the hole that we just created. Uh, let's see, direction like this. Uh, we want this to go about, about this far. Let's just call it, uh, let's call it 70. Mm, might be hard to get anything in there. It's, yeah. Mm, it's, it's too much. 65? I think that's, uh, let's just call it 70. No, we don't want, se we don't want 70 of them. <laughs> uh, I think that'll, I think that'll work. All right, there we are. Uh, we don't need the sketch anymore. Let's round the corners like a lot. This is why we didn't go all the way to the end. And there we go. We got one strap. Save that. Hopefully, this is nice and nice and comfy. Actually, while we're while we're here, we might as well round the rest of these, huh? Yeah, there we go. Okay, and uh, now we're basically going to do something similar on the other side. Except uh, instead we're going to add a little nub and we're going to have uh, a buckle uh, to hold down the, the piece of, you know, have a little, little buckle there to hold down the bit, of, uh, the bit of strap. We also need to figure out a way... Let's save. Uh, we also have to figure out how we're going to attach an, uh, a loop. We're going to need a loop, brother. We have to figure out how we're going to attach that. We'll deal with that in a sec. So I'm actually going to step back and we'll create our new sketch here. Because the reason I'm stepping back is because I want to project this right here. Oh, is there nothing to... Is there nothing to project? Yeah, I guess there's I guess there's nothing to project. Oh, there's a, there's one dot. Okay. Yeah, because it's, it's going to be at a 90 degree angle, so it's pointing directly out. So the only thing that's going to project down to is this one measly little dot. Origin's getting in the way. But that's fine. That's 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 still enough. So let's grab our well first let's project. Grab ourselves a little line. There we are. All right. Uh, we definitely do want to make this right angle with this. Okay. And uh... no, we don't want we don't want that. Okay. So from here. How do we do our dimension there? Is this, this is 10 millimeters here, or is it 10 millimeters to here? I think it's going to be, yeah, like so. 10 millimeters. All right, and what was our angle here? 75? I just heard what sounds a lot like a, like a puppy trying to make its way in here. Suspiciously like a puppy, even. Well, let's let's measure. That's twelve millimeters. All right, so we just we just got this wrong. So twelve. There we go. Okay. Cool. All right. So we're gonna slice that. So we're gonna slice that off, and we're also going to need a buckle. So we'll, we'll add a we'll add a buckle, and we'll add our little uh, our little nub, little nub dingus. That's a that's a dingus. So let's see. let's put this here. We'll create ourselves. What what are our options for slots? Is there an easy easy way to do a do a slot here? Mm. All right. So we'll create ourselves a construction line here, and just like we did before, we'll draw a line down the center. Create ourselves a a slot. I'll show you here. You'll you'll see what I'm doing in just a sec. We're actually going to extend this beyond the side and make it a bit bigger. We can we can dial in the dimensions later. Uh, 
this. We're going to make linear with, with this. So this is going to be our buckle. John, or, or, or John Arbuckle. Uh, how thick do we want the... We're, we've been using two. We're using two millimeters. We can call it, uh, we can call this three. All right. All right, so uh, basically the other end of this, um, the other, the, other, the other end of this is going to feed through this buckle, and that is going to help keep it from flapping around. It's going to, or rather, it's going to make it less likely that the buckle catches on something and comes loose. Super, uh, yeah, this is, this is super easy. Okay, so we just have to adjust this to be, let's call this one millimeter. Uh, hmm. What what what's ha what's happening here? Why can't I why can't I move this? What's going on here? Oh, all right. <laughs> Uh, let's see, let's try it. Let's, let's 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 try this. This might end up being too loose, but again, plenty of time, plenty of time to change to change this. Why is that? Why is that over constrained? What's uh? What's I'm really confused? Did we like? What? Why? Why? Why would that? Why would that make this over constrained? Why is that line black? What the? Like that? Hmm. All right. Well. Hopefully we undid what yeah, I don't I don't know what happened. Like I don't know what ended up causing it to be constrained. Alright, so this thing is two millimeters thick. Well now I'm really confused. Why what what's what's dictating this thing's dimension? So we have, so this thing is, is three millimeters. So in total, we want this to be six. All right. So from here to here, six millimeters. Oh, it's r radius. I thought this was diameter for some reason. Ah, uh, I see. Uh, so this right here should be two-ish. Yeah. 4.25. Perfect. All right, and that'll that'll slip slip through there. All right, so that'll go through. Actually, let's just bring this up all the way to 4.5 because then that will make this three millimeters. So we have a full millimeter of clearance to work with. Might even want to add more clearance. What's our clearance, Clarence? Yeah, there we go. Okay, that'll be fine. Oh, so let's save before something goes wrong. Okay, and now we just want to add our nub. Our nub. So uh, what did we make? Oh, there's no, re no need to remember. Uh, let's just measure this. We want to make it slightly smaller. It's 3.5, so I'm to make this a bit smaller, and then we'll, but we'll, we want to make this a bit smaller at the bottom, but then we will uh, flare it so that it stays put, and then we'll flare the the other end in a different in the other direction, so it's easier to push through. You'll you'll see what I'm you'll see what I'm talking about in a sec. So we're gonna make ourselves another slot. Puppy is barking his face off. He's been a real brat lately. Took him out to took him to get trained yesterday. Uh, start working with a dog trainer because he's being a he's being a total brat. 15 millimeters. So 11. So we have our minor diameter there is 11 mil. 11 and a half. 
I think we can make that. We can make that work. Let's create ourselves a slot. Oh man, he's making some weird noises. Five point five, and then we will make this three. All right. Let's make it some some noises out there. Is, there, is everything all right? Work is everything all right, or is he just being a is he just being a little jerk? How far apart do we want these? We it's it's a mistake to make them too close because then it won't it won't stay put. Okay, I think this will do the job. All right, let's give this a shot. So first thing is uh, we want to actually add this part on. All right, so we'll extrude this down to here. Why? All right. And then we'll cut out these parts here. Yeah, might as well cut that out. Why not? Actually, we should probably just do all. Step type all. Because then there's, uh, it reduces the chances that it loses the reference at some point. Okay, so this thing is two millimeters thick, so we're probably going to make this, well, let's call this four millimeters. So I'm going to extrude now our little nub here, four millimeters. All right, but here's, here's where things get, get spicy. We're going to taper it. And uh, hopefully that flare is enough to keep it uh, to keep it together. Brooke says uh, the puppy's just being a jerk. All right. Ah, oh, what a what a little drama dog. And then we add a bit of uh, I think four millimeters. I think is too much. Let's call it three. It's being a drama pup. And uh, then we just make sure that we. Sh we chamfer this down to the point where it's thinner than, uh, let's see, we just want to chamfer this down to the point where it's it's thinner than the hole so that we can get purchase in the hole and get it all get it all up in there. So let's just confirm that we have enough room. This is 1.8, so we have to make this a bit taller. Uh, 3.5. All right, that should be enough. 2.3. Uh, so this should be 3.25. There's, yeah, I, we, we, we're not going to, we're going to have to make some changes to this. So this is, this is just a ballpark. Cool, cool, cool. All right. So that's it. That's our, that's our, that's our strap. M more, more or less. <laughs> yeah, I think this is too much here. Yeah, leaving a millimeter of clearance is too much. Could we could end up? I, honestly, I, you know what? I don't even think we need that. We need that. Yeah, I don't even think we need this clearance here. We're just gonna wipe this out and uh, just make uh, make this part right here coincidental with. Yeah, there we go. Easy peasy, lemon greasy. All right, so let's jump at let's jump back ahead now that we, you know we've rounded that, and then let's turn our attention over here. Uh, actually, oh, we, should, we can actually reuse these. We can actually reuse this feature to put the same rounds on this side. So now it is all nice and symmetrical because as I ranted about last time, people love things being symmetrical. And if you if you make things not symmetrical, people it people actually like will dislike it. Yeah. All right. Wait, wait. What happened? Oh, I didn't create a new selection set. Der herpity derpity. I just overwrote it. I give vaults. New selection set. So uh, we're running out of filament over there. So hopefully the low filament alarm. Uh, my ideas, thank you so much for the sub. So let's uh, let's see if the runout sensor works. Three, four, even five. 
Vince Vince McMahon dot meme. People do. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Can't scroll. It's being really weird. I don't know why it's not scrolling. Uh, let's see right here. A reader says that is a small strap. As you said, humans can't estimate circumference. Well, this this is the strap that's doing the work. This thing, if you think about it, like this, can only really fall halfway through, like through here or at the very end. Uh, and I also have a rather small wrist. Look, at the end of the day. We can always reprint this. This shouldn't. This this shouldn't take too long. So, uh, what else do you? What else do you want to do here? Uh, let's see. Uh, we could stand to build this up a little bit. Uh, all right. So we're gonna do a little bit of extrusion here. We're gonna bulk this part up a little bit to make it a little less likely for it to turn uh, sideways for it to warp. So let's uh, add another, another two millimeters. There we go. All right. Um. There we go. What happened here? Oh, huh. it's weird. That's fine. We're gonna we're gonna be rounding this off anyways. All right. So this will just bulk it up a little bit and make it less likely to flop and flex all weirdly. And uh, let's sham for this. This is only two millimeters, so we don't have a lot to work with. I'm gonna just put a very light chamfer on this of just 0. 0.6 millimeters just to knock the corner off because that can uh, rub against your skin and cause all kinds of problems. And uh, we're likely to be printing this either 0.15 or 0.2 millimeter layer heights. So it will, uh, all right. We should, uh, our, our run out sensor should trip soon. Yeah, uh, let's, let's see. All right, and uh, we're also going to, but, yeah, let's see. So we can put a more aggressive chamfer here. There we go. All right, I think that looks good. Uh, let's, let's backtrack a little bit here. Because uh, I'd rather apply, again, we're going we're gonna to do the chamfer here. So I'd rather apply... So let's see, the chamfer, we don't need to apply the chamfer to the bottom, we only need to apply it to the top. So let's just call it, let's call it one. Uh, yeah, give or take. So let's see, uh, wait, let me think, think, using, using the old, the old noggin. So this is going to wrap around and get pressed down. We actually want the chamfer on the underside to make it easier to push it onto the, the little, little nub. All right, and then when we, yeah, when we do our rectangular pattern, uh, we just copy that as well. And there we go, Bob's our uncle. Fast forward to the end, and I think these are about ready to print. Runout sensor hasn't tri tripped yet. I wonder if it like tri wonder if it tripped by accident early on, and uh, then I disabled it. I think that might be what happened. So uh, yeah, let's 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 change this manually. Uh, let's, let's switch this over here. All right. Hit change filament. Grab the rest of our silk filament. All right, here's our, here's our silk filament. We're gonna have a pretty abrupt color change, but whatever. So let's get that filament in there. Come on. 
I'm gonna, after, at some point, maybe after this print is done, we're gonna open up the runout sensor and figure out what the heck's going on here. There's no way it's supposed to be this hard to, to get filament through the runout sensor. Come on, what the heck is going on here? I don't know why this is so difficult. I feel like it shouldn't though. Oh, yeah. Well, let's, maybe if I turn, if I turn it around? No. I'm going to cut the end so it's, uh, so it's sharp. More likely to be able to push things out of the way. Just cannot get this in. There we go. All right. Insert filament and press button to continue. Come on, filament is in, guide tube is in, button is pressed, filament is squirting. All right, we're in business. Man, it purges a lot of filament. I think the reason I, yeah, the reason I pulled the, I, I snapped this red off, why we had this little bit, is I was printing a, a PLA Benchy for comparison for one of the, one of the every filament videos that's coming up. And uh, I wanted it to contrast with another red Benchy. So I just pulled plastic, I just pulled plastic out until it uh, was a different color. I just make sure it resumes properly. Oh crap. The Z is uh the Z is way off. Oh man. It didn't it didn't huh. It was really weird. It returned back to the wrong height. But then it then it immediately corrected itself. That's really weird. Yeah, it returned back a millimeter too low. That's very strange. I wonder why I did that. It's really weird. I wonder why I did that. I wonder if this, oh man, oh, it must be, um, all right, I still haven't updated the firmware for this thing, so I'm guessing that, I'm guessing they sent me an earlier, like an earlier unit. Yeah, they probably didn't send me one that was uh, intended for, for sale. So I, I, I should have updated the firmware. Huh. Seems a bit a bit cockeyed. There we go. Got to gaze deep into the beard. Gaze too long into the beard. The beard gazes back. There we are. Cool, cool, cool. Oh, that's interesting. Check this out. It says message from your printer. So, huh, you can interact with it. Ah, oh, you can you can interact with it using OctoPrint. And yeah, now that I'm now that I'm remembering, the uh, the control panel is not a first class feature. The control panel that I've been messing with is actually an accessory. Uh, Lulzbot designs their printers to work headless, like they're intended to operate connected to a computer. So it makes sense that they would implement. It makes sense they would implement like full G, like full interaction over USB with all of their commands or over serial with uh, with all their commands. Yeah, oh, very cool. I wonder. Yeah, I wonder why. I wonder why that happened. I'm guessing it was a a bug. Zekeepa says, "Can you call it names over Octoprint?" I mean, you can. I can call it names right now. You jerk. Friggin' ninny hammer. 
Oh, you mean like you can name the printer? Uh, yeah, you can you can give it an identifier so, to make it easier to tell which is which when you have a whole bunch of things. Uh, when, when you have a whole bunch of printers rolling at once. Yep, so we've got Squirty Harry, we've got Squirt, Squirperus, Squirt Stephanie, and Sultan of Squirt. Uh, although Squirt... Or it's not Squirt Stephanie, Squirperus. Although Squirperus doesn't have Octoprint. That has, uh, we're using Duet Web Control because frankly it's better. Uh, so let's see. I think this is okay. I think this, I think this is good. We should be able to prototype this. Let's hide the breadboard holder. So this might this might collapse a little bit, but as long as this stays open, even a see this might this might collapse a bit, but as long as it stays open, even a little itty bitty bit, then we'll be able to use the paper clip to you know pump punch it open. So yeah, let's get our butts over to the let's see right here. All right, there we go. So let's get ourselves over to the tool chain over to the Sultan of Squirt and uh, get that guy set up for uh, for TPU printing so we can so we can start running these off. Uh, let's... Uh. Cool, cool, cool. I wonder how long this will take. Let's before you before you jump too far into it. Before you jump too far into this, let's First save, and then uh, let's see how long it'll take to print. Because if these, look, if these, it's unlikely these will work the first time, but if the dimensions are about right. Uh, <laughs> no, that's not what I wanted to print. That's not what I wanted to print. I wanted to print just the strap. There we go. Um, yeah, let's see how long this... This will take. I'm not sure I have a TPU profile. I'm not sure I have a TPU profile for the for Super Slicer. Uh, let's just uh, here we. Go. I've been I've been trying to switch everything over to Super Slicer, but I think for this it's more appropriate to use Prusa Slicer because that has all of my that is my my known working TPU profile that I had to spend a while dialing in because found the TP TPU to be a little awkward to work with. We could also, let, let me think here. So we can run this off on the Squirperus or uh, on, the Sul on the Sultan of Squirt. I'm thinking the tool changer is the way to go here because that has hammer extruders, which handle flexible filaments better. So yeah, I think, I think that's our, I think that's our boy. I do have to do a little, we are going to have to do a little maintenance on it because we had a failed, uh, failed PEI print. And I don't know how hard that's going to be to get off the bed, but let's see. The camera never works the first time. It never works. I always have to unplug it and plug it back in. You gotta, why you gotta do me like this camera? And, and, and it's, and it's wobbling. Alright. So let's make sure you fine folks can see enough of the action. Alright. Okie dokie. Alright. So let's turn my attention over here. Uh, yeah. A, stream st a Steam Stream asks, Hey Zach, is there a page of contest rules? When, wondering when the project is due. Project is due on the 9th. The 9th of October. Uh, yeah, the rules are right there. Just hit exclamation point contest and check chat. Right there. Uh, Dr. ConMD says, I am in the process of moving from Tinkercad to Fusion. I like it so far. Well, compared to Tinkercad, like... Compared to Tinkercad, every, everything's going to be heaven. Tinkercad is a ginormous pain in the booty. There we go. I had, yeah, I used, I had to design a part for my computer before I had the computer finished. So I, I used Tinkercad and it was such a pain in the butt, in the butt. Oh my God. 
It was so obnoxious. Okay. So let's see. So let's see here. So this is the PEI. Yeah, something went something went wrong. Nozzle jammed. PEI burnt. So uh, yeah, it's not supposed to be gray. It's supposed to be beige. So something's gone. Something went really, really wrong. Ugh. So the bed is because we were printing in PEI. The bed is coated with. Uh, oh, here we go. Uh, because we're printing in PEI, uh, the bed is coated in nanopolymer. It's a special high temperature bed adhesive because you can't use glue at 150 Celsius. It uh, it's not it's not very sticky. You know what? It, you know it's you know what's brown and sticky? A stick. That's the joke I tell people when they ask me for a joke. You ask a stupid question, you get a stupid answer. Okay, so we will run this off on extruder number three. Because uh, I th think I had it. Yeah, yeah, let's run, we'll run this off. Extruder number three because I feel like it. I think it's also kind of my default extruder. Okay, so let's swab this all down. Uh, yeah. I don't, yeah, we don't want to use, we don't want to use the, the Titan because it's only got a single gear. We don't want to use the Volcano. The only downside here is, uh, I just, I just realized we had a, the downside here is that this is a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. So we could swap the nozzle. Let's, uh, tell you what, let's head back over, head back over here. Oh, hey, we're done. Let's let that cool down so we can pull it off. Da -da -da -da. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to send this over to Super Slicer. And we're going to see how long it'll take on a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. If it's unacceptably long, then we'll either replace the nozzle or switch printers. So let's, I keep forgetting I can use the, the space mouse. All right, so let's lay this flat like so. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll import my TPU profile in a sec, but we, we have to, here we go. I have a profile here specifically for uh, specifically for flexible filaments. Can't remember which is which. High temperature, faster, fast, extra fast. 0.3 millimeter layers, sketchy TPE. Is this it? Basically, oh, that's weird. A debugging check for this application has failed. I don't know what that means. Uh, all right. So this is fairly slow. How quickly? Let me, yeah, let me, let's pull a Prusa slicer and just see what, what settings I used. I can roughly copy them over. Uh, one of the big things you want to do with flexible, one of the things you want to avoid with flexible filaments is first off retraction. Uh, yeah, you want to avoid retraction, uh, but you also want to avoid, let's Squirt. There we go. You want to avoid retraction and you want to avoid changing the speed. You want to try to print it at a consistent speed. Whenever you change speed, it has a chance of buckling because it's being suddenly pushed in harder so it, it, it can go sideways, literally. Uh, and if you retract, it comes it, like flexible filaments like liquefy. They, when, they don't just melt, they like turn to fluid. So if you pull it out, it can just like gunk up the gears. So, uh, yeah, that's part of how the profile works. Uh, let's see, I had, here we go, TPU is my TPU profile. And I have my, one of them says TPU, the other is TPU with exclamation points. Let's take a look at the exclamation point one. So let's take a look at the settings, speed. So I had this about 30 millimeters per second. Uh, 245, 60 Celsius. 100% cooling at all times. I don't actually know what would happen if I if I blasted this with a fan 100%. Pony Lover says, uh, "Sup, dude, fan of your YouTube channel. Welcome, welcome to the stream, Pony Lover. I hope you and I hope you enjoy this too. Getting a we're getting a new video. Getting we're doing a new video tomorrow. Unless something goes terribly wrong, uh, we're gonna drop that video tomorrow morning." I know it, it took a lot, a lot longer than it, than it should have, but uh, 
took a lot longer than it should have but not only is it a pretty rock solid video but it's gonna lay but like all the preparation i did laid the groundwork for three more so hopefully we should be able to get back on schedule okay so let's change this all to a flat 30 millimeters per second we're going to turn the fan on all the way uh yeah there's no funny no funny business here all right so we're back in super slicer so let's go back to print settings and let's turn this all to a flat 30 millimeters second 30 30 30 30 30 millimeters a second There we go. First layer we can run a little slower. Uh, basically, what happens if you, on top of that, if you run if you run TPU in particular too fast, you can end up with boogers like it on the print itself. Like the nozzle will pick up. It's very sticky, so the nozzle will like pick up bits of the last layer and drag them around and make a huge mess. Yeah. Error reader says I found NinjaFlex profile uses lots of retraction. It works well. Uh, I guess, I guess, I guess you're lucky. I've had a hard time printing Ninja Flex in general. We're going to drop the travel speed as well. So we're going to do, uh, what is this? 240. 240, 60 and 60 cooling. 100%. No, it's too much. Can't do 100%. Uh, 75 is still probably too much. Let's call it 50 for now. Because remember, these fans are like crazy powerful upgraded hell fans. Okay, so we're moving at a flat speed. We've changed our, our, our we've changed our, our, our heat. We've changed our temper. Changed our temp. We changed our temperature. We've changed our fan behavior. I'm sorry, you can't see anything. <laughs> uh, we're we're doing uh points. Let's do point two millimeter layers, because speed is key. Uh, and for infill, we're going to change our infill to concentric because that means, because, uh, concentric infill, remember the layer lines are going to be, oh, let's see, remember the layer lines are going to be running, or like the concentric infill is going to be running like do, 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 do. So hopefully that makes this nice and flexible. So let's see how this turns out. So this is saying an hour. Yeah, this is uh, this is estimating an hour. Oh, it looks like we don't even have any infill. Yeah, because it's it's too thin. Yeah, we're not even don't even have infill. Sick. So uh, yeah, I, I think we can make an we can make an hour work. Wait a second. Oh no, we're not printing this on Squirty Harry. We're printing this on on Squirt on Squirt Barres. Sketchy TPE. And we're, we're doing this on extruder number three. All right, so this will take a little longer because it's a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. Okay, it's only giving us an estimate of, of an hour, six minutes. That's fine. I think we can make that. What time is it? Three o'clock? We can make that work. Uh, does, yeah, does it make any sense to print the other, the other strap too? We're not going to be able to finish this project today, but uh, we can get everything in the works. Does it make sense to print the other strap? Probably not. We're going to want to do a test fit, and this is the smaller one. We're, do we... we don't want to brim. So let's see. We don't, want, we don't want to brim. Let's save this before we... Ultimate print... Let's see. 0.2 millimeter... 0.2 millimeter TPU. All right. And then we'll save this as... TPU turbo fans. Just to remind myself which which is which. All right, so we want to center this good, and uh, we need to slather on the glue. So let's go ahead and turn our attention back. No, yeah. So let's turn our attention back over here, and let's spread it on. TPU loves to permanently stick to stuff. So we want extra, extra, extra glue. So we're going to slather it on. We're going to slather it on at a right angle. 
and we're going to let it dry a little bit and we'll put on a little bit more. In the meantime, in the meantime, let's turn off all of our, let's see, it still has some of the settings loaded from when I was doing all the um, high temperature printing. So let's grab nozzle two and let's preheat this to 240. Let's see. I think I have some, I think I have like the tail end of a roll of, a roll of TPU somewhere. Uh, where'd I put it? I thought I had like, one of these spools has like a tiny, tiny amount of TPU on it. Might as well finish that off. Might as well at this point, right? Uh -huh. I hope I didn't just chuck it. I don't think I, I don't think I would do that. Oh, I got too much filament. Can't keep track of all of this. I tried to like sort it a little bit and put everything in, put everything in, in kind of like, like put the flexible filaments over here and put the, the carbon fiber filaments over here. But there are still just a tremendous number of filaments. What did I do with this? I don't think I would just throw it out, especially because it's flex filament. Small amounts of flexible filament are are useful because uh, oftentimes the stuff you're printing with flexible filaments is not very large so even a small amount is still useful I'll be damned if I remember where I put it <sighs> well hopefully this hasn't taken on too much water we'll see if it uh here we are yeah, if it cracks and spits, see. Yeah, we'll we'll see what happens. If it cracks and spits, then uh, we're you know we're kind of sol. We'll, we'll have to we'll have to get creative. In the meantime, let's add on our third layer of glue. Yeah, it's not. Usually when I'm slathering on the glue like this, it's because I think whatever I'm printing can damage the bed. TPU won't damage the bed, but it will... It, it, like, it's likely to damage the print. There, I don't need this dehumidifier in there anymore. Uh, it's not likely to damage the bed, but remove it, but peeling it off is likely to damage the print, so... Don't even want to... Don't even want to risk it. Uh, here's a... Here's a question. Is... This stuff going to jam up in the feed tube. I guess I guess we're gonna find out. This is 98, I think it's 98 shore TPU. So it's it's quite stiff. Or rather, when once it prints, it's going to be uh, on the stiff side. Not the best material for a wearable. Uh, you shouldn't really have TPU against your skin for more than a few hours. Oh, it's getting stuck in the coupler. Yeah, you shouldn't have it against your skin for more than a few hours, but it is the flexible filament that most people who replicate this project are going to use. So it's important that I use what... So if I'm designing this project for other people to make, it's important that I use the same tools and materials that they'll have access to. Yeah. Remember that... Uh, uh, when you're making a project and uh, you're expecting or, or hoping that other people will make it too, it's not really your project that you're making. It's somebody else's project. So the question isn't, can I make this? The question is, can they make this? All right, so it doesn't seem to be a terrible amount of friction. Uh, we're gonna loosen the drive gear a lot. We don't need it for flexible filaments. And uh, let's... Go back to the dashboard and uh, let's try to get this filament in there. All right, it's caught the drive gear. Caught it. Let's see if it uh, see if it makes it all the way out without something terrible going on. Come on, TPU. And then we'll see if it's waterlogged or if we can use it.
Oh, all right, all right. It's 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 in the it's in the hot it's in the uh, it's in the 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 heater. It's in the hot end. It's coming out. I'm not hearing any cracks or pops. I think we're I think we're good. All right, and then we're going to extrude a small amount at a faster speed to just knock any of the purge filament out that's still hanging around there. little bit more all righty we're in business it's, nozzle's going to dribble a lot but eh, what can you do uh, all right very nice one thing that i want to do is uh reduce our uh, I, I i talked before about uh retraction and i just want to let's go to filament overrides i don't want very much retraction so it's currently set to two millimeters. I think two millimeters should be all right. Mm, yeah, I think two millimeters should be fine. So let's, uh, let's see how this works. It's one hour and two minutes. We're going to send it. And uh, yeah, see how, this, uh, see how this all goes. In the meantime, let's head over here and... Uh, Head over here, let's release our, our print. Yeah, I left a big old line when it switched filaments. Pain in the booty. All right, uh, where did I put our, here it is, our breadboard. So let's make sure the breadboard fits. Looks pretty, pretty snug to me. Switch over to here. Where did this cookie come from? Must be from my browser. Yeah, this looks, this looks like a pretty good fit. Let's, uh, let's, let's test it for comfort. Yeah, yeah. Seems pretty, seems pretty comfortable. Nice and nice rounded corners everywhere. Yeah, I think this, uh, I like this design. I think it's good. I like the design. So let's uh, let's let's cue this up and print it for real. Mm -hmm. Put this over here and uh, let's go back to here. All righty. So uh, yeah, let's uh, let's let's print this up. What kind? What material do we want to use here? Uh, we have a bunch of. <sighs> let's see. What materials do we want to use? I guess we want to use something similar to what, to what up, you know, people who make it are going to use. It'll look real like it's 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 like kind of transparent, so it'll look cool if it's also transparent. I'm going to get my butt over. Uh, I'm going to get my butt over here. Make sure that this first layer is going down nicely. Looks like we're leveled the tiniest or the tiniest bit high. Or it might be under extruding. It's hard to tell. Oh, sorry about that. Hmm. I think we're I think we're under extruding just a little bit. So I'm gonna up the extrusion factor to a uh, hundred five percent. Let's just see what, see what happens. I'll see what goes down, so to speak, you know, because it's going down onto the, onto the, the plate, you know. I'm gonna increase the tension a little bit. I think I might have over, overdone it. Let's see. Yeah, definite. Definite over extru under extrusion. I'm gonna increase our, our tension even further. I don't remember having this problem before. So maybe it's maybe it's unique to the the hammer. -a. <clears throat> Turn up the extrusion factor even more. It's 
So TPU has a uh, great adhesion to the bed. So even though bottom layer is not going down, so even though like not enough filament's going down for the bottom layer, I'm, I'm still, I'm not worried about it coming off the bed. Let's see. I think it's getting there. Yeah, I think we can afford to turn the tension up a little bit because the filament path is so short. Oh, this is definitely under extruding like crazy. Let me see, let's drop this down a little bit, see if that helps. I wonder why, maybe the filament's just wrong dimension i don't know why i didn't notice this in the perusia though maybe maybe it was one mistake canceling out another hmm i didn't slice this for the the wrong diameter the nozzle or something right no i don't think so it's really weird what's going on here I, I hope this actually is a problem and it's not just like the first layer of film is so translucent that I'm seeing I'm seeing issues where there aren't any yeah, let's let it I'll let it get to the second let it get to the second layer all right in the meantime we can uh, we can print this stuff in in this in this silk filament uh this rainbow silk we can use a different filament let's see we got abs we have uh some fancy plas we can we can finish off one of these uh see we can finish off one of these mini spools Ma print out of marble oh, that would be a little weird print out of black carbon fiber everyone likes carbon fiber Let's see, we got orange. What if we have a well? Let's see if we have a clear material. Let's see, we use polycarbonate. Not exactly. I don't think I want to print polycarbonate outside an enclosure. That's uh, that's a recipe for disaster right there. So what else do we have here? We have acrylic. We have uh, what is this PC? This is PC TPE? That's kind of a weird material. Alloy 910. That's a nylon. Yeah, I like I like the idea of doing this as like a semi. Uh, doing this with a clear filament. Uh, I think it'll look cool. As for which one though, that that is the question. Do acrylic. I don't think it's really. I don't think it's really acrylic. Polycarbonate. Let's, 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 let's do the acrylic. This is Kodak. Is they say, they say it's acrylic. I'm I'm skeptical. All right. I think uh, I think our layer is going down. All right. Still not as nice as I'd like it, but sometimes you gotta play the hand you're dealt. Let's see. All right. So this stuff is uh, right. Uh, so let's get ourselves over uh, here, and then we're gonna set that up. Very nice. Okay. So this stuff prints at about the same temperature as PLA, which real acrylic does not. Hundred percent acrylic is. Um, it prints much hotter, around 260 or so. Uh, it is very brittle, like far more brittle than P than uh, PLA. So I'm guessing it has acrylic in it, although it's I don't. There's no way it could be 100% acrylic. So let's change our filament. Uh, 
Ah. All right, let's change her, change her over. Uh, I can't remember what it prints on. I should probably look that up though. Hmm. As for this, see how that plays out. See how the flexible filament plays out. All right, so let's take a look. Let's just take a look. 100% Luxurian Squish says correctly, 100% acrylic must be really stinky. Yeah, 100% 100 uh, acrylic needs a uh, ventilated enclosure in order to print it safely. It releases all kinds of of noxious fumes. Jeff Hardy says, stupid impractical idea. Set up a tool head to be a 3D scanner if you ever get it working. <sighs> a lot of people, that was, so that was the original, uh, that was the original idea behind the assemble project, like the, the, the router, the mill, the mill attachment. But I think it just had too hard of a time making it accurate enough. Yeah, the false positive rate was high. I wanted to take a camera, basically make a tool that's a camera. So it, it prints a layer, grabs the camera, and then turns, and then like basically takes a 360 degree, you know, takes a 360 degree set of photos for each layer. Uh, so you can do bullet time on your 3D print. Uh, yeah, ended up, ended up not doing that. That was that, so originally that was what I proposed to uh, E3D. That was the original idea for what for the video to use the tool changer, but I decided later to do the every filament video after the first one was so popular. Yeah. Fun fun bit of trivia. All right, let's go through this what the heck's going on here? Let's let's bust this open. Let's let's see what's uh, see what's going on here. All right, let's let's see what's what's going on. Why is why is this run out sensor being such a jerk? It's like our poppy. What is that? That is a hex. Let's see who's behind the mask. It's communism. Oh my god. Our Congress people, ladies and gentlemen, and cyborgs. Okay, so it's, it's, there's definitely a micro switch in there. Oh, that would explain it. The little, uh, the little arm fell off the, the micro switch. Maybe I, I, I probably broke it when I was trying to jam a filament through like a barbarian. There we go. Well, that'll, that'll do it, won't it? Oh, check that out. We got, we got brass, uh, brass heat set inserts. So this thing is designed to be opened and closed repeatedly. That's the main thing that the brass inserts give you over just drilling straight into or tapping straight into plastic yeah so this thing is designed to be serviced all right well that ex that explains uh why it didn't work <laughs> i wonder i wonder how that happened i you know what i bet you know what i bet happened i bet when i was first setting this up i loaded in some filament that had already passed through a different printer's extruder so it had uh had marks on it from the drive gear and I bet one of those caught the, caught the film, you know, caught the, the arm on the way back. That's, yeah, even if that were the case, though, that would still be a design flaw. All right. Well, it's, now it's clicking more positively. All right. Well, that, that explains why we had the false positive before. All right. Yep. That that ex that explains the false the false detection, because the the arm that actually does the detection has had snapped off. Alrighty. So let's be careful here not to stick my finger into the fan. Again. 
One of these days, I'm just going to like hack an entire finger off, stick, stick it into a moving fan by accident. By accident. All right. Let's load the filament. We have to look up uh, how to how to how to stick this. See if we need glue. Crazy Carl thirty seven. Thank you so much for the for the sub. I really appreciate it. We're really getting this channel off to a good start with uh, with all these subs. Really, I uh, really appreciate it. Kodak acrylic filament. What do we use? Extra dry. Compatible online support. Ooh, this is going to look really cool because I'm pretty sure these are made of acrylic. So I think that'll look pretty, pretty neat. And plus, we can, we can weld acrylic together using acrylic cement. So uh, we should be able to get a nice, strong, like, th thingy. Yeah, thingy. How do we print this? Uh... Let's see. Bed temperature. So it's not saying we need anything particular on the bed. Uh, highest dimensional accuracy, low moisture. What do we what do we put on the what do we put on the bed? What do we what do we put on the bed? What do we what do we do? Uh Hmm. Maybe they discontinued this. I wouldn't be surprised. I don't know. I don't know who would buy this apart from somebody making an every filament on Earth YouTube video. It seems strictly worse than than clear PETG. Very hard and flexible. Uh, suitable for optical polycarbonate apple. Oh, maybe it's a polycarbonate blend. Maybe they put a little PC in it to make it. Uh, Put a little PC in it to make it less uh, brittle, and uh, maybe they make some... It's probably mostly... P it's got to be mostly PLA, because it prints at such a low temperature. Uh, what the heck do I treat the bed with? Because I've, I've done this before. I, uh, I just don't remember what I used. Do we need glue? Let's check back in that, that Amazon page. Is this the is this the same one I bought before? Yeah, it's the same one I bought. I thought somebody made a comment saying what to put on the bed. Uh, set print temperature two ten, bed temp sixty. Turn off fans or set to low. We have to remember that. Uh, let's just try running it straight on PEI. Yeah, lots of lots of stuff likes printing on PEI. So let's get back to Fusion. Show our breadboard holder. Let's, uh, yeah, let's, let's make it. It's time to rewatch my own video. I don't think I would have, I don't think I would have put that in the video. I originally was going to give full printing instructions for every filament in the every filament videos, but yeah, that would take for freaking ever. All right, so let's put this flat. Uh, let's see, we're going to turn this so you can see it. Might be cooler to see, yeah, I'm going to turn, I'm going to turn all the way around. This, I think it'll be cooler to watch from the other direction. I like to watch. I don't think, I think I turned that 179 degrees. Okay, so we're doing this on Squirty Harry. Uh, what speed should we do? Let's call it fast. Yeah, just a regular, regular speed. Okay, so we're going to start with the PLA, except they said specifically no fans. So, I'm, I'm a rebel who doesn't live on the edge. Who li yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a rebel. So, default fan speed is zero. <clears throat> but uh, I'm going to turn it on a little bit during bridges. And a little bit during string thin layers or during small layers, because uh, I don't want it to get blobby. But yeah, thirty percent is not very much. 
So actually, let's let's turn to fifty percent for bridges, and uh, fifty percent for Mac. Uh, just in case. Okay, let's see. Uh, we don't we don't want any support material. We shouldn't need it. This is 0.15 millimeters. Perimeters, two perimeters, 0.15 millimeters. Let's uh, let's crank this up to 0.2. I don't have time for this. So this is going to take a while. Uh, yeah, two hours. So the stream's going to be done by the time this is finished. But that's fine. Uh, yeah, that's 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 fine. Don't worry about it. We'll make the. Uh, We'll make sure to put the, I'll make sure to put this up on things and to share it to the socials once it's done. Looking good. Oh, one other thing. Oh, we, we started printing this before. Yeah, we started printing this before I. Oh no, uh, I was gonna say started printing this before I, I added the paper clip, but nope, we definitely added the paper clip. All right, so this is a problem. Uh, this is not even close to enough. Uh, not even close to enough clearance for the paper clip. So let's go back and uh, let's go back and adjust some stuff. We definitely want to make the yeah, this should be much wider. Uh, I'm going to call this two millimeters. From one, up from one point two five. What's what 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 was this? Uh, yeah, this, this round round details are more likely to collapse on themselves. So this also means we're going to need to change this. Let's do that. Five. Yeah, this is going to cause knock-on knock-on effects. So change this here to two millimeters to compensate. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, because the other option is we heat, just heat up the paper clip and. It right through, I don't think. <laughs> Unopposing craft dinner says they said no fans, but Zach won only fans. I mean, more like only like fans only on during. Ah, 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 ah! I never, I never picked something. I never picked something for that. So ah, let's see. Let's bring this up to. Or... Hmm. I never locked that down. So we, we actually, actually gives us some some options here. I do like options. Four point five, perhaps. All right. Let's see how bad this screws everything up. Eh, could be worse. All right, caused a uh, caused causing a bunch of a bunch of issues. Let's go back here and uh, instead of I think two might be too aggressive. Let's call one point seven five. Looks all right. Okay, what's What's going on here? What's uh, what's what's what seems to be the problem? All right, nothing funny going on there. This is a this is a fusion moment. All right. We're gonna we're gonna remove we're gonna remove these because they're they're colliding with the uh, let's go you know what let's actually just change this from, from two to one oh point six just a tiny bit just to knock the uh, knock the corner off all right what what happened here why why is what happened here why what what why 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 is Ah, that's the problem right there. Uh, 
Mm-hmm. All right. Cool. All right. So it was just it was just a minor, a minor, a minor boo boo. All right. I don't like, I don't like how, how little room or how little. Uh, Point eight millimeters. So it's only two. It's only one or two layers. All right. So we definitely are going to want to. Let's see. So we're definitely going to want to drag this down a bunch. Right? Or is that is that going to have any effect? I don't think this might not have any effect. Is it point nine? So it's minimal effect. Uh, all right. So this. Well, we'll still we'll still keep that. Uh, actually, that's gonna that's gonna raise the profile. I think it's better to keep this lower profile. Let's hope this doesn't cause too many issues. It did cause all kinds of issues. <laughs> all right, so let's change this over here and. Uh... What happened? Reason all kinds of hail. So these here, let's make them less uh, less aggressive. No, oh, wait. All right. So these particular corners, we want these. Uh, yeah. Particular corners, we were rounding them too aggressively, and uh, yeah, it was cutting into our cutting into our whole room. So let's create another selection set and just tune those by hand. Uh, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna look at this dead on. Switch into wireframe mode and just use this as our use this as our guide. Three millimeters. Three millimeters. It is. There we go. That will give us a little more room to work with. I think we also, I don't think we had to, I don't think it has to be quite this aggressive. Maybe, maybe you'd call it 2.4. All right. There we go. Let's check back in. Oh, no. Let's check back in over here. All right. Looks like we're uh, yeah. Looks like we're uh, we're off to the races. It's filling in. It's filling in properly. Uh, let's switch back over here. Save it. Make it. Oh man, I have too many things open. Let's make it up. Hmm. Dills uh, asks, could the paperclip be inserted when you glue it together with the band in place? Uh, it could, but the band is likely to take damage. Uh, I'd like the ability to... Yeah, I'd like, I don't want to make it permanently captive. I'd like the ability... Plus it can snap. Uh, well, I guess... Basically, I, I want to give you the ability to change the band. It's... Uh, I consider it a disposable component. So let's put this flat. Uh, we're going to pick... Did we save the acrylic, or did we just close it? I don't think we saved the... I don't think we saved our, our acrylic profile. So let's go back to the print settings. Uh, slice this up for point 0.2. Let's see, infill. Uh, we want... Uh, let's do gyroid, because it'll look cool. We'll be able to see all the wavy bits within the... Uh, like, through the, through the clear. So let's see, filament settings, we're going to bring this up to two, f oh no, wait, no, wait, hang on a second, no, this is just, this, use, this uses like the same settings as, uh, hang on a sec, this uses the same settings as uh, PLA, except we just want to turn the fan down. We do not want to run the fan all the time, uh, keep it zero most of the time, except uh, for bridges and overhangs, I think we'll try 40. Eh, 
So let's bring it down to 30. I don't really know how the how effective the fans are on this on this printer yet, but I, this, is a, this is a decent estimate. Uh, do we do we change anything else? I don't think we changed anything else. Did we want to slow this down a little bit? We should, yeah, probably for safety. Turn it 40. Turn it 40. Ah, 50. 50. 50. Yeah, all right. This is, uh, where do we want to, let's move this back a little bit, make it easier to see. We do want a brim, we don't want supports. We're printing this on Squirty Harry. I think this will do the job. All right. Mm, this wall still looks really thin. Yeah, I don't like this. It's only, it's two layers. Hmm. It's two layers, but I just, uh, here, let's save the, uh, let's save this. Ah, why do I keep hitting the wrong key? All right, here we go. Let's see. A we, we can't put a quotation mark in there. Oh my gosh. Kodak acrylic regular fans. And we'll save this as 0.2 millimeters, 40 millimeters, 40 to, uh, 40 to 50 millimeters per sec. All right. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna tweak that again. I just I'd I'd rather just in worst case scenario, right? We we drill it out. I just don't like how how big those end up being. Like I don't like how thin those walls are. I get I'm I guess I'm paranoid when it comes to thin walls, especially with wearables. Yeah, acrylic's not the best material, but I, I, I think it'll I think it'll be the most photogenic. I think it'll give us the looks. At the end of the day, isn't that all that matters? Squirty Harry. All right, Kodak Acrylic regular fans. Let's slice her on up. Hour and a, let's see, hour 40 minutes, hour 50 minutes. Yeah, I guess that's to be expected. I still don't like how, how thin that is, but look, prototype, let's do it. Let's do it. All right. Let's actually uh, let's actually switch these around. Uh, let's put this here, and let's switch this to here. The strap is uh, the strap is looking good. Yeah, the uh, oh man, the hammer does such a better job of printing uh, printing flexible filaments than the than the Prusa. The Prusa extruder, even the new, even the improved like Mark III S and S Plus Prusa extruder, is still not that phenomenal at printing uh, flexible filament. Ah. Let's see what's going on on the chat, and uh, let's also put oh, let's show everyone what we're what we're doing here. Oh, I think I think we can update our to do list. I think we can update our to-do list. Ah. Uh, check. I gotta set up like hotkeys or something. Auto I auto hotkey. I find it so confusing. Let us see. There we go. All right. So, by the way, this episode is still sponsored by Thangs, uh, in honor of, in honor of the uh, our Hello Wearable contest. I'm challenging the community to make anything wearable and 3D printed. If it's 3D printed and it's wearable, I want to see it. All you have to do is post it to Thangs using the hashtag uh, Hello Wearable, and uh, you can win 
one of these lols, one of these uh, kick butt lols bot printers, as well as a yeah, as well as. Oh, hang on a second. Let's uh, let's pull back to show you the kick butt lols bot printer. So yeah, you can win one of these awesome lols bot printers worth fifteen hundred dollars, along with a five kilo supply of filament. Yeah, uh, runners up. You get store credit for uh, you can get store credit for Lulzbot's uh, for Lulzbot's store, which they sell E three D parts and components for a whole bunch of common printers, or that that will work with a whole bunch of common printers, I should say, as well as some more filament. So uh, yeah, all you uh, the contest ends uh, October 9th, and I completely forgot to mention this before. Uh, some of the, my favorite projects will get featured in my in an episode. I'm going to make a top 10 uh, printable wearables for Halloween. Uh, it doesn't have to be Halloween themed. Uh, it doesn't even have to be wearable technology. Remember, all I'm doing is literally putting a breadboard on your wrist. So uh, yeah, to enter, you just upload any anything wearable and 3D printed. You can use things that aren't 3D printed, although I'd prefer if it's printed, to things.com. And uh, yeah, use the, use the tag HelloWearable. And you can win. Uh, yeah. Today's uh, that's that's why I'm making a wearable breadboard today because so far I don't think anyone's entered. And uh, I'm okay. Oh, I, I, I would take a second lull spot. Plus, I know I have my vote. Nah, I'm not. I'm not really gonna enter. I'm not really gonna enter. Maybe I'll put this on the. Maybe I'll put this in my video though. Anyways, uh, I really hope to see a whole bunch of your projects. Feel free to go to our Discord, discordgg voidstarlab We've got a dedicated wearables board, wearables channel there for you to talk about all things attached to consenting living creatures. Doesn't have to be for humans, by the way. If you want to make a cat wearable, as long as your cat is cool with it, make a cat wearable. See if I care. A bull. I'm not gonna. Oh, oh, we're not sticking. Yep, we've already, we've already screwed the pooch. Let's see. Yep, we have already. No, that's wait. That's not what we want. That's what we want. That's not what we want either. There we go. Yep, we've already screwed the pooch. Uh, it's not sticking. So. Ain't that some crap? Where did I put that octoprint window? Here it is. Cancel that. Why isn't the cancel button working? Uh, Bueller, Bueller. Yes, cancel the print. Womp womp. Uh, right. How do we? Well, this. Oh, it's just sweeping it off. How do we park? We gotta, gotta park the extruder. Oh boy. Can it go back up? No, it won't. Motion. Park it. Alrighty. So it didn't stick to plain old PEI. Let's see. Why is the Z misbehaving now? Having some, there's some weird stuff going on here. Uh, it seems to have uh, disengaged the Z motor. That's really weird. Uh, just, maybe if I hit disable steppers, I can. Enable steppers. Yeah, the z-axis seems completely slack. That's really weird. Maybe uh, I think we gotta turn it off and turn it back on. The universal repair. IT desk. Have you turned it off and turned it back on? 
All righty. There we go. We're going to have to reconnect. That was, uh, that was weird. Yeah. I guess something... Stop called... Oh, because of BL touch error. Oh, that's weird. I wonder why that happened. Yeah, we got some crud. Uh, Unimposing Crafter says, Why doesn't that block have any clothes? A sock. I haven't, I, I, I haven't modified this printer at all. This is the, this is the factory configuration. I want, uh, I want everyone else to see exactly what, uh, what you're going to win. <laughs> so I don't... Alright, so uh, it didn't stick. It's really weird. Mm, Alright, uh, shall we try Magigoo? I mean, friggin' everything sticks to Magigoo. Let's, uh, let's park this out of the way. Park that noozle. Uh -huh. Wee! There we go. Yeah, every, everything sticks to Magigoo, so uh, let's use, let's use Magigoo. Everything will stick to, if that doesn't work, we'll bust out the nanopolymer. This is the PA flavor. I keep forgetting which is which. This is the polycarbonate flavor. This is the polypropylene flavor. This is the, this is the classic flavor. All right. So let's get this. Oh, well, it looks like a little bit of it stuck. Huh? I've have I have oh oh I see, I see. Thank you very much, Brooke. There we go. Lots and lots of Magigoo. Probably a little too much Magigoo. All right, and I have also been instructed uh, to perform another modification on the printer. I know I said I was going to run this thing stock, but this one uh, this one's too good to pass up. You have to bear with me one sec. I have to. Grab myself a little, uh, gr gotta grab myself some of the supplies. Uh, let's see. Ah. Let's see, we're gonna need a little bit of this. We're gonna need a little bit of this. Yep. Just perform this, this mod real quick. Let's see. Okay, done. So I think that should be everything we need. Uh, let's try printing it again. Magigoo. Why is this thing always cockeyed? There we go. <laughs> oh, that nozzle is all kinds of crapped up. Oh my. Oh dear. Oh dear. Let's grab a Weezard. Oh, it's gloopy. Ah. The people ask for it. The people get it. Are you not entertained? Things I do to avoid having to pause my print. There we go. Are you not entertained? That is squirty Harry. <laughs> looks uh, looks surprised.
Glad everyone's uh, glad everyone's entertained. All right, let's uh, let's see if this let's see if this works. I had a little trouble printing this stuff uh, last time. The prints came out a little bit warped, but we'll we'll see. It should come out nice and clear. I think the problem was before when I printed uh, this acrylic last time, I had the fans on. I didn't read the fine print, and boy, was that print ever fine. So let's actually keep an eye on it this time. Mess around with that Z, that, that baby stepping a little bit, that Z offset. It's looking good. It's looking good. You're not going to be able to see what the heck's going on until the first couple layers go down, though. Ah, NL12 says, if googly eyes don't save the print, it is a lost cause. Too true. We've done everything we can. It's in God's hands now. Luxuriant Squish says, it looks like Peppa Pig. Hmm. 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 That's, oh, that's creepy. Peppa Pig. Printer. Peppa Pig. Oh, I must have how did I, I must have accidentally muted the mic. That's weird. I didn't, I didn't know that would happen. Ah, learn something every day. Okay. Speaking of Mario Brothers, wasn't, uh, wasn't there just some announcement? I, I heard like there was this announcement of a, of a live, a another live action Super Mario movie. And apparently Dunkey did a stream watching it, and it was one of the, I've been told it's one of the funniest things of all time. And I believe that. Dunkey is, uh, Dunkey is a king. I, I can only hope that one day I'm as funny, I'm even one-tenth as funny as that, that Puerto Rican. Man, that guy's so friggin' funny. Every one of his videos is a total banger, too. Like, Dun Dunkey was, uh, Dunkey's like the, the ideal that I that I hope to reach with my own channel, like just all all killer, no filler. But yeah, I gotta I gotta I gotta check that out. Live action Mario movie. Oh my, that the first live action Mario movie was a little before my time. I'm old, but I'm not that old. But uh, yeah, didn't didn't they, they cast like like Key as Toad? Oh, it's animated. Oh, that, that makes it less. They got Chris Pratt and Jack Jack Black. Who's Jabel? Who's Jables? Hey, let's, let's 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 let me look into this in the other monitor. Let's see what's going on here. Uh Mario movie. <laughs> Chris Pratt will star as voice of Mario in Super Mario. What? What? The Lego guy? That's a weird choice. No, no, the, Mario should, it's Danny DeVito. It's supposed to be Danny DeVito. <laughs> what the heck is going on here? Entertainment Weekly, see the all-star cast voicing the movie. Oh, it's a slideshow, we're not looking at that. We're, we're gonna go straight to IMDb. Shigeru Miyamoto is credited as a writer. So let's see. Anya Taylor Joy is Princess Peach. Chris Pratt is Mario. Seth Rogen is Donkey Kong. That's a that's a good cast. That's a good casting. Jables is Bowser. I don't know what to make of that. And then again, like Bowser doesn't really talk ever, right? Like 
is there any game where Bowser speaks? And it's not te- and it's not text, not him going. Rawr, 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 rawr. Fred Arneson is Cranky Kong. That is another mm, casting choice. Keegan Michael Key is Toad. Charlie Day is Luigi. This is wow. This is quite a cast. This is this is quite this is quite the cast. Hmm. Storyline: A plumber named Mario travels through an underground labyrinth with his, with his brother Luigi, trying to save a captured princess. I see. I don't know what to make of this. This seems like some very strange casting. Is Charlie Day Felicia Day's brother? Are they related? Really? Uh, but Donka Head says, I know he does in, no, I know Bowser talks in Super Mario Sunshine. I don't remember that. I played, I played Super Mario Sunshine, but I've forgotten almost everything about it. I, it was a very, I did not enjoy that game. I found it not enjoyable. I know that was some deep criticism right there. Uh, he talked in that? I, I guess I don't think of Jables. Man, speaking of Jack Black and video games, can we talk for a second about how messed up brutal like brutal legend was? That all right. Friggin' brutal legend. Let's switch this over here. All right. The demo for Brutal Legend is one of the greatest video games of all time. Like not the game itself. The game itself is bad. Very, very, very aggressively bad, but the tr- but like the demo of that game is in its own in its own right one of the funniest games of all time. It is freaking hysterical. Uh, yeah. But man, that game, it's it's like you play the the demo makes sound the demo right is it's all uh it's all like hack and like third person hack and slash gameplay. The, all right. Brutal Legend is a class is like a hard rock themed like well you play the you play the trailer and it looks like it's basically God of War except with Jack Black and it's everything's like heavy metal themed and it's it's really it's hysterical right so you basically brawl your way through this first level you get into this you, you know you you find a car and you use to bowl over enemies you decapitate it, a dude all right and then you leave that demo area this is this is where you actually get into the paid game but it, and you discover it's not a hack and slash. It's an open world game. It's it's an open world exploration game. It's actually it's actually Ocarina, Ocarina of Time, and you go around exploring for a while, right? And you start doing some missions where you escort some you know you escort crowd some crowds of NPCs and you take some stuff down and uh you know you start the, you start getting more different npcs and then you realize that it's it's not an open world zelda, uh, zelda game it's actually an rts yeah it's a hack and slash open world real time strategy game with racing elements yeah it's yeah Unfortunately, with all those genres smashed together, the RTS tends to dominate it. So, like, in that respect, it's kind of interesting, like, an RTS where you personally can, like, de- can, like, deploy down to the battlefield and enter the fray. But the entire game as a whole, it doesn't work. And it's also, like, it's not the way you want to do a rock-themed game. Like, Heavy Metal, alright, but, like, like, I don't get it, because Heavy Metal plus God of War is like the funny it's like there's so much potential in that because like 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 think of how like god of war right everyone forgets that the first two god of war games played themselves super serious they took they they like they were not self-aware at all like they were ridiculous and over the top and goofy from the beginning but they played it all completely straight and even still god of war is one of the silliest games of all time and that was when they were trying not to be. That was when they were trying to be serious. So you take that, and you add Jack Black and doing hundreds of voice lines and mocap. Like, the soundtrack had like it's like a, the soundtrack. It's not. It's not just like 
a greatest hits of of raw. It's not just like a greatest hits of metal. It's like ten greatest hits of. It's like fifteen greatest hits of metal albums. They licensed like a hundred fifty of like the greatest heavy metal tracks. It was the last thing Lemmy Kilmeister ever worked on. He didn't just voice a character. He voiced like like one of the most important NPCs. Tim Curry was the villain. Everything except the gameplay was in the demo was top was 10 out of 10 died la died laughing but man the rts gameplay was awful the gameplay was terrible <sighs> it, they sh th that game they should have just made it like fine you want to combine like the open world and the hack and slash you could make that happen you have like an open world uh you have like you know like a like a, like an open hub world and then you kind of like go into the different rock genre areas and hack and slash your way through them but the rts stuff get the heck out of here that's that's not what i wanted <sighs> brutal legend uh it's is it worth playing that's that's the question i think it's worth playing i don't think it's worth finishing i think once you've played for a couple hours you've pretty much sucked all the meat off the bone but it's it's man the concept is so good and the beginning is so good Oh, it's great. Troll Barton 520 says, would you say that a brutal legend? <sighs> I mean, Double Fine just, they just, they just don't know when to stop. Like, having an open mind is good, but you can't open it so far that your brain falls out of your skull. The RTS, yeah, the RTS gameplay, it also wasn't a very good, it wasn't a good or well-balanced RTS game. Because, like, if you think about it, like, if you have this, the whole, the whole shtick of this thing, is you're playing RT in RTS. You have to play an RTS game in large areas, right? Because you have to, because moving your troops, you know, deploying your assets is part of the challenge. Uh, you know, if you try to do an RTS in a very small arena, it's, you know, it's it's going to just turn into like a who can deploy the most stuff first. So you play in a fairly lar fairly large area. So that intrinsically creates a a clash between the brawling gameplay and the RTS gameplay. So they had to add in vehicles, because you have to be able to get yourself around the battlefield quickly. Auto yeah, basically it's auto chess. They should have just invented auto chess, but they didn't. Um, so another problem is if you are in the fray brawling, you're not playing the RTS game. You're not controlling your troops. So they had to balance it in such a way where the troops left unattended can hold their own. They don't need you to babysit them all the time, but simultaneously, they can't make them so good that there's no, cause like, when you're going to the fray, like, you want, they want to make you powerful, right? So you can brawl it out and then finish your, finish your fight and get back up to the, the bird's eye view so you can play the RTS again. But that means they have, you have to be really strong. So basically it had all these pieces, none of them worked. Uh, yeah, none of them works. They put, dumped way too much time into a multiplayer version. Like, so they, they actually, like, fully ba like balanced and designed three factions, right? Like, not just the player, because, like, in the story mode, you only play, you only use your troops. But in multiplayer, you have the choice of you, the, uh, the villain, and one of the NPC factions. And they all have, like, a full set of, of troops. Yeah. Ugh. It's, yeah, it's a bad game, but the demo is hysterical. Get the, get the demo for Brutal Legend, I'm telling you, and it's, the demo is one of my top 10 favorite games. Oh man. Yeah, they should, they should have just, they should have just made it a God, of, like a God of War clone. They should, they should have just axed the, uh, the RTS elements. Yeah, it, they should have just just axed the RTS stuff. Like, if they want the idea of, like... They added the car. The car wasted... Shouldn't have had a car, first off. They shouldn't have added the vehicle. Uh, they should have just let you, like, rock your way over there. Like, just, like, you strum a power cord so... So... You strum a power cord of such immense magnitude, it, like, sends you flying across the map. Whatever. There's six heroes. Oh, that's true. Right, They're, and they all have voice acting. The voice cast is incredible. Basically, they, 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 they were so focused on nailing the, the look, feel, and sound that they just hadn't... They, they, didn't, they didn't, like, give the developers any oversight. Ah, oh, friggin'... Friggin'... Ah, 
double fine. They just, they just don't, they like, they just don't know when to stop. I, speaking of, I gotta play Psychonauts too. I gotta, I gotta give that a, gotta give that a shot. Repeat of Failures is Brutal Legend directed by Suda51. No, I want it to make sense. The point, the point is it made sense. <sighs> Suda51. They just released other No More Heroes too. I didn't, I didn't expect that to become a franchise at all. That was another game that, that was, that's the opposite. Like that game, that game, like it's also not very good, but I, I def, I wanted to finish it. Like I played that all the way through multiple times. I played No More Heroes and No More Heroes 2 all the way through to completion multiple times because it's just such a funny game, but they're, they're, it's also not very good. Uh, Brutal Legend directed by Platinum Games. Now, that is where I park my car. I would play the heck out of that. Yeah. Platinum Games is definitely, they're definitely at their strongest when they have some outside influence kind of constraining them. Like, yeah, the games where they're allowed to just cut loose and make whatever they want turn out to be kind of meh. I'm thinking here of Van like Vanquish being the number one. Like Vanquish, they were basically given a blank check, and that game blows. There you go, I said it. But uh, Metal Gear Metal Gear Rising, Metal Gear Rising is the only time when I've played through an entire game. Right, I played through the whole game, realized afterwards that oh man, I was playing this wrong the whole time, and then replayed the entire game correctly and enjoyed it, and, and, and enjoyed that too. Like, usually when I play through most of the game and I realize I've been making a mistake, I'm just like, screw this, never playing this anymore. But yeah, you can play almost all the way through Metal Gear Rising without ever parrying. I didn't know parrying existed. It didn't explain it. Uh, yeah. Suda51, oh man. And Nowhere Heroes is pretty, was pretty funny. Game was, uh, that game was great. Uh, Killer7, that is another game that I wish was better. That game is cool as heck, but it's borderline unplayable. Unimposing Craft Dinner says, Zach is the Cuphead reviewer. Oh no. Am I, uh, am I a stereotype? Why, what, what, what did, what did they, what did they say about Cuphead? I don't like, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't enjoy Cuphead very much. I, I quit after about an hour. I don't like having to try very hard at my games. I don't like my games to be difficult. I like my games to be easy. Oh, did not, oh, he didn't know how to jump. Oh no. How do you mess that? Cuphead only has two, there are only two moves. It's a, it's a six button game. Oh my God. That, that game, that game is cool as hell. Like the freaking all completely hand drawn, a completely hand drawn game. Like I didn't enjoy playing it, but I respect, I, I, I still, I still bought it and I watched someone else play it. <sighs> that game is cool as hell. The art is so good. I, as you can tell, I'm a sucker for games that have good art, and especially good audio. I'm, I'm willing to overlook very, very bad gameplay if the flavor of the game is, is, is there. Man, there are a whole bunch of games like this. Yeah, I'm willing, I'm willing to overlook a whole bunch of crap if the, if the flavor is on, is on point. There are a whole bunch of games that I, I'm the only person I know who actually enjoyed them. Uh, what, are, what are some other ones? Oh, uh... What's it called? PsyOps the Mindgate Conspiracy. It's this obscure PS2 game that's basically the Force Star Wars The Force Unleashed, except better. Like, just to help you understand what goes into making a game like this, uh, the level where they give you psychokinesis, right? The ability to pick guys up and move them around is a sewer level full of fans, full of giant fans. Le the level where they let you pick guys up and throw them is 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 full of vats of acid and giant fans and other things to throw enemies into. It's great. Uh, Bullet Storm. I love Bullet Storm, even though it's also objectively a horrible game. They clearly made the first twenty minutes of that game and then completely decided to change the tone. But man, it's a lot of fun. The weapons are super imbalanced. Peter Molyneux's games are terrible. I hate all of his games. I hate. I don't like him too much either. I don't like. I don't like people who overpromise. Sean, like what's his name? Sh like 
the guy who, the, the only the only exception I'm willing to give to this is if they honestly don't know better. Like if if they if they honestly don't know what they're doing, like uh, uh, No Man's Sky. Like I'm I'm willing like I'll give I was pissed at I was pissed at that guy Sean whatever his name is, but like I've I've learned that like I I was wrong about that I was wrong about that company I thought the guy was just a blowhard like like Peter Molyneux but they were an indie game developer that suddenly got a ton of cash and just did not know how to like they just didn't know what to do with their game and made too many promises like they're used. To, that that's its own story. Like they were testing stuff internally and then ripping it back out. But like the the guy was like Sean, whatever was like telling everyone what they were making. It's a whole thing was a huge a huge kerfuffle. Actually, let's uh, let's put this over here. The dog is freaking out. Let's keep an eye on what this printer is doing. But man, Peter Molyneux is such a friggin' blowhard. All the, the whole Fable series is such butt. Yeah, I don't, I don't like, I don't like the games. <sighs> not, not a, not a big fan of, of him personally. I, Populous did not. Populous was not like. It was. It was. It came. It. It. it Populous had its reputation because of timing, not because of, not because of quality. And black, black and white was interesting. I thought that game was cool. But uh, yeah, Star Star Citizen is the wor is is the worst of the worst. Star Citizen is hundred percent a scam. I, I Star Citizen is was, I I I'm convinced was designed as a scam that the that like members of the team ended up falling in love with the project and gave up on the sc scam to actually sincerely try to build it. But no, that game is a total mess. Yeah, it's. Uh, that and the fan, the fans for that game. You, I don't know if they're they're still so bad, but they used to be terrible. Yeah, they're sort of the they're sort of the opposite of No Man's Sky fans. Is like, like No Man's Sky start like No Man's Sky fans started out being super toxic, but then like once the game actually released, like most of them just left, and now it's and now it's only people who have like stuck with the team and like watched it develop and the No Man's Sky community is actually really friendly now but as far as i know the the star citizen community has only become worse half life dills 42 says still waiting for half life 3 half life 3 will never be released i mean i'm calling it now although i have no way of actually knowing that half life 3 will never happen 0% chance never absolutely not uh, even I don't even think Half Life Two episode, episode Three will uh, will ever happen. I don't think Valve has any reason to make games anymore. Ah, oh, looking good. Let's let that cool down for a bit before we pull it off. I don't think Valve has any reason to make games except to lead by example. Like if they want developers, basically like VR, right? Like the fact of the matter is, companies just don't know how to make uh, they just don't know how to make good VR games. So. I I'm I think that uh, let's switch over here. There we go. Yeah, I, I think they made Half Life Alex just to kind of show other developers how it's done. But yeah, I don't think they're making games anymore. I don't I don't I don't think they have a reason to. They already like their shot in the dark was um, was artifact. Basically, they make they make so much money off uh, they make so much money off Steam, and believe it or not, they make so much money off selling hats in Team Fortress Two. They are, there's really no reason for them to ever make anything else. Like, like they've pretty much won. Like they, they ended the game. Uh, it, Arrow Reader says if Half-Life 3 is released, it'll be decades from now and the company will have been bought out. I don't know what, like Valve has, is clearly, clearly has no interest in selling. And there, Valve is clearly no interest in selling. It's it's a private company, so no one can wage a proxy battle and seize control and, and seize control of it. So, uh, yeah, I'm I am I'm very I I have I'm I'm pressing X to doubt. I don't think Half Life Three will ever be released. Even on top of that, like, even if Half Life Three released, it would be a Duke Nukem Forever situation. Like the ship has sailed. Like the sh the ship has sailed. That that type of that type of 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 first person shooter just no one plays them anymore. I mean, even the call of even like the Call of Duty campaign is just a vis a, 
it's just vestigial. The tight like I think Titanfall 2 was kind of the end of this. The Titanfall 2 campaign was at least as good as I'd say Titanfall 2 campaign was at least as good as maybe not Half-Life 2, but I don't know. What's a what's a what's a good comparison? It was another good story-driven FPS of the of the era. Oh man, it's been so long since I even played these games. Fear. I'd say Titanfall 2 campaign was at least as good as Fear. But even still, like less than 25% of people who bought the game ever even started the campaign. Uh yeah. I'll tell you what game they should I'll tell you what game they should be working on. The thing that I genuinely believe is a st strategic misstep. I think they should be doing two things. First, they should buy Warframe. I think uh, I think Warframe gives them exactly what they want, and Warframe is already one of the most popular games, has been for years on on Steam. I think it it ties in exactly with what Valve wants to do. Second thing is they got to bring back Left 4 Dead. I think uh, I, I think they have not sucked all the marrow off the bone on Left 4 Dead. There's still no def there is no definitive couch like virtual couch co-op game. Like, there's such a void that Among Us, a game where you actually have to talk to people and make plans with your friends, like a game that doesn't work with matchmaking very well. Like, Left 4, Left 4 Dead or a game like it, people, people want to play that. I think they're messing it up. And plus, like, micro, like, uh, which, ga which game, is, which game is, are people more interested in, my, which game do you think people would be more interested in microtransactions for? Right, a game like Team Fortress 2 where everyone's like flying around and if you spend an extra two seconds looking at someone's hat you get killed. Or something like Left 4 Dead where if you want you can just like stop and like show off your, your new gun skin. Basically people are, people are still playing Payday 2. That's how much of an itch needs to be scratched here. People are playing Rainbow Six Siege. People are playing R6 Siege. This is, uh, this is, this is looking pretty good. So it looked it looked short, but it's making it more than halfway around my wrist. So I think this is fine. Left 4 Dead totally needs, uh, if not a sequel, they should at least at least make a successor. Uh, yeah, and like it's if you man. Yeah, I, I think I think they need back back for back for blood, uh, back for blood ex exists, not nearly as good, not nearly as good. Payday two is like they just Payday two just add like it's just, it's very silly. I think I think something in the middle would uh, would 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 do the job. I think the thing that the thing Left 4 Dead did really well, I've never seen any other game do, is it is it it convinced randos to play the objective. Payday 2 does not do that. Let's be honest. At 9 games out of 10, you start you, you go in, you start you drop into the game, the guy to your left immediately pulls down his mask and starts shooting and you're not even inside the building yet. Like how, nobody plays the objective in Payday. Or uh, not wait, uh, ba no back for yeah, uh, random guy is right. Back for Blood has been released. Which one am I thinking of? Which which one am I thinking of? Uh, kill, killing floor. I might be. I might be thinking of. Uh, I might be thinking of killing floor. Or uh, not Daisy. Uh, I, I. I think I'm thinking of killing floor. Is that's a. Uh, that's sort of. It's more horde. That's more of a horde mode game though. Now that I'm thinking about it. Uh, a Steam stream says unlimited pay for DLC requires silliness. Eventually, you have to sell people things that are off theme. Oh yeah, like you need a reason. You need a. You need a premise that allows it to happen. But. But you can sell pay to win you can sell pay to win stuff in a co-op game. Cause it's not cheap. Players aren't like you it's it's fine to sell a player something that makes them better because it's not making another person worse by comparison. Like in Warframe, like Warframe can can have like bananas power creep. And like it's not it's definitely it's by no means pay to win, but if you want all the weapons. You, you're like it's not practical to to make them all by crafting, so, but even still, like that's that's not a big deal because it's co-op. Like, it's it's it doesn't make the experience feel cheap for people who don't want to spend a few bucks. 
Like you just the other guy just is using a flashier a flashier gun. It's a it's an issue of the game. I, I think Warframe I don't like Warframe. I you can you can absolutely go infinite on Warframe, hundred percent. Uh, you don't you don't you don't you by no means have to pay for it. I put in I think a hundred bucks when I first got into it, and I don't think I've and I'm still I'm still using that. Uh, yeah. As long as you're not a completionist, you can play Warframe for free. Let's, uh, I guess while we're here, might as well start the... So this looks great. I think these, these settings work, these settings work perfectly. So let's close that. Let's head back to, uh, let's head back to Fusion. Let's print this side too. Super Slicer. Yeah, you can see the bottom is, bottom is a little, a little wonky. I don't think the under extrusion was as bad as as I thought. I, I think this filament is TPU is just really clear as it gets laid down. So I think I was overestimating. It's still, I definitely still I'm, I'm definitely going to increase the uh, the extrusion multiplier. What do you think? Should we print it like this? Should we print it on its side? It's a terrible idea. Uh, rotate, rotate. Escape. Uh, all right, so we're going to go to filament settings. Uh, where's our extrusion multiplier? Do we have... Let's lock the length at two millimeters, uh, but wipe when we're retracting. Where is our... Hmm. Oh, where's our extrusion multiplier? Shouldn't that be here? Lift Z, retraction speed, do retraction speed, filament. Oh, here we go. 1.1. There we go. So we're going to print, let's see, TPU. TPU with turbo fans. TPU with turbo fans. Print this on extruder number three. Slice it up. An hour, 14 minutes. All right, that's fine. Let's make it happen. Let's make it happen. Ah. Let's see, Error Reader says, I know people say games cost more to make now, but the thing is, I don't enjoy expensive games, the argument doesn't work on me. I'd prefer if the devs put less time and money and less bloat in the games. I think it's a middle, I think it's a middle ground. There, there are definitely times when, there, there are definitely situations where, uh, oh, there we go. No, wait, that's not it either. Uh, every, every, every camera is doing, do, like, doing something that it's not supposed to do. Uh, there are definitely situations where developers put their time in things that aren't necessary. Warframe definitely falls victim to this. They just keep adding new systems to Warframe. They just keep adding new systems. Like they don't they don't need to. They it, it make like the game is is ridiculous to get into right now. It's not hard to get into. Like it has it just it bombards you with like 25 different systems and current like 50 different currencies and none of it matters, right? Right? Like it's it 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 it, it, it seems but it like if it's a feel bad moment when you get into it. Like what the hell is going on here? Uh, I think back, back when Binding, Binding of Isaac, I think they did it perfectly. Like, just release the game. Every once in a while, release a booster pack of more... Not... The word content being as loosely applied as possible. Like, you know, release a booster... This one has a bunch more, uh, single-use items. This one has a bunch... This pack has a bunch more, um... Yeah, this pack has a bunch more items. This one adds a new level. This one adds some new characters. I think that's 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 the way to do it. Uh, yeah, and I they they ended up so like they didn't sell the booster packs, but they released them as part of a new version. So effectively, you were buying a season pass, and I think that's fine. Like, yeah, and I, I think that's fine. On top of that, they didn't make it more expensive. Uh, 
to 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 start playing. Like you didn't have to buy it in the base game and the DLC. You just like basically whatever the most recent version is, you pay for it full price. I think that's the way to do it. A game like Warframe, I think is is right in the middle. Like it's it is uh, Warframe. Ah oh man, if anything was changed about Warframe, I would hate it. Like. It is a very grindy game, but that's the point. Like, it's it's supposed to be a grindy game. Like, every everything you do in that game is grinding, whether you're paying or not. Like, like you're you're basically just like it's just a very easy game where you're doing very easy objectives, and that gives you a lot of freedom to use whatever weapons and character you feel like because it doesn't really it doesn't really matter. And I like that. I like I like having the I like having uh, all the freedom. But um, yeah, if anything about it was changed, then it would seem super exploitative. It actually has multiplayer. Nobody it has PvP. Nobody plays it. It's the only. It's the only game I know where that has PVE and PvP, and nobody plays PvP. Like there are like twelve people playing Conclave and Warframe. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't understand it. But uh, yeah, I, if you never played it, I, I would. If you never played it, I would recommend. I would recommend it. Uh, let's see. Uh, Urufu Shinjiro says, Honestly, one of the best pay models in gaming right now is a niche game no one knows about. IL-2 Great Battles, series of combat flight sims. It's a great model of expansions that work together no matter what you get. They're all standalone or DLC. Yeah, buying things piecemeal is, is, is one way of doing it. Although, at some like, every once in a while, you really should... Every, every once in a while, you really should release all of the content at a low price or for free. Basically, the Yu-Gi-Oh! model, uh, I, I call it. That, like, it's fine to sell premium stuff, but every once in a while, you should effectively give it all away. Give away the important stuff so that new players and players who just don't play that often aren't, aren't being punished. You don't have cumulative problems. Uh, I think a game that's... On the, I think the the game that's popular that I think is on the dark side of the microtransaction line is uh, uh, Genshin Impact. I am I have no interest in playing that game. That is super pay to like it's just super sleazy about the pay to win elements. It's just it's just really greasy about all of it. Like you play a game, like you play a a, a quest. You play a quest to like learn about a new character's backstory and to do some stuff with them, and then. And then, oh, you have to you have to unlock them, but like you can only unlock it by playing random chance games. Like on Warf Warframe, there are random loot boxes, but they're the worst items in the game, and no one buys them. They're worthless. Basically, on Warframe, like if you want a particular Warframe, you just give them two bucks, and there you go. You want a weapon? Buy the you buy you spend ten dollars on a pack, and it includes four, like five specific weapons. But you always know what you're getting. That's that's the point. But, uh, yeah, that game, that game is just, like, I don't, I don't want to, like, like, I'm fine paying for a game, but I want to know what I'm getting for my money, right? Like, and I don't want to have to keep paying to keep up. Like, that's why, that's why I quit Magic. Like, I have no problem spending a bunch of money on a game, especially if it's a real life game. But I just, I don't want to have to keep spending money. That's ridiculous. Uh, yeah. Mobile games are the worst. I, I, I have like there's some aspect of my personality that I just, I just, uh, I, I, I can't gamble for very long. I, I have like a just a distaste for it. Eventually, I'll just like pretty quickly. I will just say, eh, I'm I'm over this. Like I played a, I played a lot of Overwatch, right? And I haven't I played a lot of Overwatch, but. I never like open the loot boxes. Like I'm pretty sure I have. A, I'm pretty sure I have like like 150 loot, various loot. Maybe not that many. I think I have probably like 50 loot boxes that I collected and won from events. I just never opened them. I just, I, ugh, ugh. Micro. I don't have a problem with microtransactions. Like I think content is worth paying for, but like, especially you know, especially if it's new, you know, especially if it's new stuff that's exp expanding the game, but. It's when you're asked to be. It's when you're paying too much, and when you don't know what you're getting. Like, 
uh, like what was it like when Netrunner, right? I used to play, I used to play Netrunner, and Netrunner, Netrunner is a card game, but it's not a collectible card game. Ah, it's a, it's a, it's not a collectible card game. Instead, each season, each, each, each set basically is split into five bot, into five packs, and uh, they release the packs every month or so, and each pack includes a full playset of every card in the pack. So you basically like you can either if you want to, you know, collect them all, you certainly can. You're guaranteed. You pay a hundred bucks, you get every card, you, you know, I think it was, I think it came down to 10 bucks per, and there were two blocks per year. So basically you pay a hundred bucks a year and you get everything they released that year. Uh, and I'm, I'm, and I'm fine with that, but like the dollar amounts, but and I, that's fine. A hundred bucks a year to build all kinds of new decks and stuff. I think that's fine. But when in Hearthstone, like I was spending hundred bucks a year, but it wasn't. I, you, you don't get every card in Hearthstone. Like you get, I get to play one of the decks I wanted to try, but not any others. Um, in Magic, like hundred bucks doesn't go anywhere in Magic. Like you just want to put your, <clears throat> you just want to play in a Friday night Magic tournament and have a chance of winning, of 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 winning a pack in Swiss. Like you're gonna have to dump three to five hundred bucks into that deck. Yeah, loot boxes. Loot boxes are stupid. I'm not, I, I, yeah, it's, look, I, it's fine if they're for cosmetics and stuff, I'll, I'll just choose not to use them, all my, all my, uh, my character, oh man, I, I, I think I, yeah, I ranked, I think I briefly broke platinum in, in Overwatch, I think I was, I was mostly playing in gold, but I would, like, I would always get, like, chat messages, like, of being a sleeper, because, like, all my, all my, play, all my characters had, like, the default costume, I just never changed them. Like I'm, I'm fine if like I'm fine if it's optional like Fortnite and whatnot like that's fine. But like when it, when 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 you have to pay to play, then I I I'm 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 doing a cost benefit analysis there. Like I, I get it. Like developers got to eat, but so do I. I'm no I'm no I'm no I'm no stooge. I'm no I'm no sucker. So let's see, we're, we're doing pretty well here. Speaking of contests, uh, speaking of contests, make sure you, ent make sure you enter uh, our 3D printing design contest. It's called wearable, it's called Hello Wearable, and I'm challenging you to make something wearable and 3D printed for Halloween. Your project has to be submitted to things by October 9th, which, look, I built a project in one day, right? I built the, I didn't, I didn't even take the, and I didn't even take the full day. Uh, and if I can do that, you can build a project in two in two weeks. So I want to see what wearable stuff you make. It doesn't have to be electronics. It doesn't even have to be useful. Like, feel free to just make a cosplay or fashion item. As long as it makes uh, heavy use of 3D printing and it ends up on things.com, that's great. The easier it is for me to make it, the more likely you are to win. Why? Because I'm going to be picking my favorite projects and making them for an episode. And I'm going to be, of course, crediting the... Uh, Crediting the uh, whoever made them, and maybe even reaching out to like say hi. So uh, yeah, you should totally enter. That's again, gotta have everything in by the ninth. The winner gets this right here, uh, this very Lulzbot. Not, I mean, not this exact printer, but one I literally identical to it. A Lulzbot Taz seven four seven Sidekick, a fifteen hundred dollar printer, along with five kilos of American made recycled. PETG. Uh, it's the same. This is the same uh, brand of PETG, T PETG that made a custom filament for Billy Rubin. I really need to have them make a custom filament for me. Anyways, uh, yeah, Urfu asked, "Do we get googly eyes?" I'm sure if you asked Lulzbot, they would consider it. Maybe I can convince them. Anyways, I want to see what you make. Uh, I'm sure the internet wants to see what you make. And uh, yeah, please, uh, please, please enter. I'm super excited. Uh, Super excited. Yes. Uh, let's see. Uh, Air Raider says, if I'm the only person who enters, do I win? By default. Yeah. There we go. Air Raider says, will you sign the printer? Unfortunately, I can't sign the printer because your printer will be sent brand new directly from Lulzbot. So I'm not going to have a chance to, 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 to sign it. Uh, no, this is, this is a brand new, <clears throat> it's a brand new one. You're not getting... You're not getting like, I'm not going to repackage this one, ship it over. Nope, you're getting one sent directly from the factory with all the trimmings. Every option you can put on this thing, I have put on it. 
Uh, and unlike most of Lulzbot's printers is a 1.75 millimeter because I know that's what most people in my community use. Yeah, we got the we got the what got the glass bed on there specifically be for wearable projects because it makes a super flat surface that's easy to glue together. Yeah, we'll see. If, I'll see if I can convince Lulzbot to put googly eyes on the printer. We'll see. You can also support the. Ch yeah, let's. Uh, oh, excellent. Ooh, we got some folks working with Blender. Yeah, that's. I've heard they improved it. Last time I tried to use it, the interface was so bafflingly baffling. I just, I just noped. I noped right out of there. Did a full on, full on over the top noping. Let's switch. Let's actually switch over to this camera so I can move this camera a little closer. Ah! Definitely don't want to unplug the, the Raspberry Pi. I think that'll interrupt the print. So yeah, got our, got our Lulzbot Taz printer. It's really sick. It's got this really, really neat design where like all the extrusions are like a, like a 45 degree angle. Pretty cool. I can't figure out what camera angle to put this in. So I'm just gonna move this over. So yeah, uh, it's, we're, we're, we're approaching that time. Uh, we're approaching time to wind down. I think it's safe to say that uh, we finished the project. We've, uh, we've, we haven't had great... We, did, we had a real run of, of bad project luck, but it seems like our fortunes are, are finally starting to turn. Let's see if that'll work. Mm-hmm. There we go. Yeah, so I think we're winding down. So if you have any final questions, in, uh, if you're working on a project, you want to you wanna tell me about it. I'd love to hear what everyone's working on. Um, and uh, yeah, as for this project, as soon as I know that it all works, I'm going to, of course, put it all on things.com and tag it Hello Wearable. So uh, I, can, I can't really enter my con I can't enter my contest, but I'm at least going to make sure there's something to search for. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, the timeline is a great feature in Fusion. I, 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 I agree. DJ Havboard says at Zah. I, I, is that supposed to, is that supposed to be me? Is that supposed to be me? Unimposing Craft Inner says, I heard 1.75 is better because it doesn't break as easily. What do you mean? Like the, the extruder doesn't break? Most of my printers are fairly reliable. Like they, they were, they were built for for print farms, which is a lot of the weird, a lot of design decisions that seem weird or, or to make them work for print farms. One point seven five meter. The filament itself is is even more reliable than one three millimeter filament is even more reliable than one point seven millimeter, uh, especially with flexible filaments because uh, it it just there's more there's more surface area for the drive gear to grip and the the wider cross section means that it's going to be less flexible, which is why a lot of flexible filaments are primarily or only available in three millimeter. I, yeah. As you'll see in a future episode. Ah, uh, yeah. Speaking of tomorrow's episode. Ah, oh, oh, I got some work to do. Uh, DJ Halfboard says, can you sketch a two by six key? I resigned from my job yesterday and I can't spell. Sketch a two by six key. What do you mean, like uh, like a two unit by six unit? It's a very wide. That's a very large space bar. That's a very large space bar. Urufu says I did a 23 minute benchy on my Ender 3 the other day. Jeez, Louise. Uh oh, the wiring for a matrix keyboard. Uh I think there's actually a generator for this. Uh, let's see, hand keyboard generator i think i think somebody wrote a script for this i would i would look this i would look this up uh last time i last time i did a hand wired keyboard i i wired it all up backwards so yeah Yes. Oh, I saw someone who mentioned Clipper. Sooner or later, like, all right, so I have a Patreon goal going right now where I'll build a Voron and run Clipper on it. I think if if we reach, I think a milestone is 3,000 bucks. Yeah, I've been keeping an eye out for a way to build a wearable 
as well. Um, I've got some ideas. We're gonna, we're, that's not going to be for a bit, though. We're going to work on the cyber deck, and then... Yeah, we're going we're, we're to work on the cyber deck. Got the boards... Uh, so, yeah, we got the boards coming. Uh, all, yeah, the 3D printed parts came out great. The, the, split, the split version should, should work fine. The, the plank version should work fine. That's plank spelled like a board, not, not like the CK. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's going uh, to be neat. It's not the final version. I am going to add another row of keys, because right now there isn't enough... There aren't enough keys right now. I made a bit of a boo-boo. So I think we're going to uh, modify... I think I'm going to modify it a little bit to add another row of keys and another column, perhaps. I'm going to think about it. Because right now it's only got 57 keys, and that means you're going to have to do a bunch of shifting, and I don't think most people are into that. I'm certainly not. I like buttons. Uh, Freaks Fire Shows asks, I'm thinking of getting my first 3D printer to play with and prototype random things. Any suggestions to good, inexpensive-ish printers that are reliable? Well, most of what you're... Well... Basically what you're, I'm actually going to do a video on this uh, around December about, you know, kind of a 3D printer buyer's guide. Perhaps, I'm not sure exactly how to, I'm going to phrase it. Anyways, uh, if you're trying to buy a cheap printer, first off, you have to know you're going to, you're going to be making a trade-off. So what trade-off are you going to make? So if you want a cheap printer, here, some of the trade-offs you could be making are one, you need a 3D printer to make the 3D printer. Like a Voron, for instance. You can make a Voron, which is a pretty high quality machine with, with decent documentation and rocks and from what I've heard, good performance, but you're gonna have to find a friend to print parts for you. Um, alternately, you can have it be in quality. You can print something like, not an Ender, in, not an Ender particularly, but an Ender style printer. I've got, I've got the BQ B1 SE, We've got, uh, I've got an Anycubic Viper, uh, Artillery makes a version, Creality makes a number of versions, and those, those use a very cheap, those use a, a really stripped down construction, but not the most reliable, yeah, they're not, not the most reliable, they tend to, <clears throat> they tend to break a bit more often, honestly, I would say, I'd say pick something that you could find a lot of aftermarket parts for. Make sure that multiple companies sell aftermarket parts. Uh, search for the make and model on something like Yegi or Things to see what accessories people have made for it. Uh, yeah, and get something that's well supported because oftentimes you can basically you can make a cheap printer often perform like a better printer if you're willing to do a little work on it. So I'd make sure that option is actually available for you. So, yeah, uh, whatever, you, whatever you do, check to make sure that there are a lot of, you know, like aftermarket parts and stuff. Uh, Unopposing Craft Dinner said, Zach made a big mistake by saying decent documentation. I thought it was, uh, I, thought, I thought it was all right. Yeah, I thought, I thought, the, I thought the, the, Voron do, the Voron docs were, were, were decent. Yeah, I mean, you got to remember, like, the documentation included was something like, I mean, you remember, like, the BQ... The BQ printer had some of the better documentation that I've uh, that I've seen on a budget printer, and even still, it was very bare bones and questionably translated, and with not particularly clear images. Uh, the tool changer is about as like that's where, that's where I would say it crosses over into poor documentation. Uh, yeah, at one point I didn't have enough experience with different printers, but at this point, at this point, I've I've print I've done so much printing on so many different machines that I think I feel more well informed. Yeah, I'm feeling a bit more well informed. That said, I'm not going to say like I have nothing to say about uh, belt printers or Delta printers, uh, or yeah, or something like a Voron because I just have no experience with them. But yeah, uh, the, I thought the Voron's documentation was quite good. Uh, let's see, even the Voron crew says. Uh, documentation is lacking let's see uh who said that who said that unopposing craft dinner says even the voron crew says the docs are lacking the steps go one two five ten three and the missing stuff you have to infer from cad right but you got to remember how bad other docs are like half the like freaking half the docs on the tool changer were just straight up inaccurate or they applied to a 
they applied to a, a, a configuration that I wasn't making. I don't, there basically is no documentation for like an actual Ender printer. A Prusa stand, Prusa is the best of the best. They, they stand alone. But they, I mean, that, that that's, that, they're, they're, in, they're in like a class of their own. I don't, yeah, you got, but just remember, like, you will not get, like, just to sum up, you will not get an, a working out of the box printer for cheap. Like, the Lulzbot is as close as, as I've ever seen. Basically, the Lulzbot was like, pull out the packing material, unscrew the pieces, throw the bed down, uh, mount the, mount the nozzle, screw, like, add the thumb screws, you're ready to print. That's the, like, I, I assembled the whole printer in around 10 minutes and immediately started printing a pretty decent Benchy. But that's a $1,500 printer. Like, it, expect a lot of crap and pooning and having to print aftermarket parts and dialing stuff in, you, you look, you, you have to pay, you have, the, the, the thing that you're making, the reason it's cheap is generally because they save on manpower by hiring fewer people to do things like technical writing, tech support, documentation, community management. Uh, and they also don't design the, they, they put more of the work on you. So, uh, yeah. Pay with money, pay with time and pay with, with difficulty as well. Like you have to, you have, like, are you interested in learning about a printer? Cause if not, get a, get a printer that, like they do all the work for you. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Let's see. I, I I don't really like to. My policy is now like I don't want to recommend any specific printers because I've received um. I've received freebies from a lot of companies, and I don't think it's possible to escape the uh, the conflict of interest. I will say that if you're talking about resin printers, I've tried three resin printers so far and I've talked to Billy about a whole bunch more and it seems like virtually every resin printer works great out of the box. So if you're doing resin, just get something with the specs you want at a price you're okay with. Uh, but they're not, uh, they're not interchangeable. They're, you print different stuff with them. Uh, yeah. Mm, I've never, yeah, I've never really had a, had a problem. Yeah, I don't, I also, I want I don't want to recommend anything in particular. Also, yeah, like, I'm, there, there's, there are conflicts of interest at play. Uh, my opinion, you know, my opinion, a lot of stuff has been bought. Uh, yeah, I will say don't get anything cutting edge or brand new. Get something that's been on the market for a few years. Don't get the, don't get the, the latest and greatest. Get something with a lot of community support. It's got all the bugs I ironed out, all that, all that stuff. Uh, watch out for gimmicks too. Uh, 3D, you don't need too many gimmicks. Get an auto leveling bed, uh, get a heated plate. Make sure if, if possible, get an all metal hot end. That's a really relevant feature. And uh, don't worry about things like an enclosure, multi-material printing. Uh, don't have the ability to print over the internet. Like, don't worry about all that. Yeah. So, any any uh, any further any last questions, comments, interests, things to talk about? Because if not, uh, if not, I think it's uh, as good a time as any to say fission mucking accomplished, project complete. I have what uh, I have something that we can put in. Uh, I have something that I can post on things. Do you? Because I really want to see it. Uh, if you if you need any, uh, yeah. If you if you hit a wall, if you need any help, feel free to head on over to Discord and uh, check out our wearables channel or Project Help, whatever. And um, yeah, otherwise, uh, thanks a lot for watching. I hope to see a whole bunch of entries to this contest. Because remember, I'm going to be printing these things. So yeah, the, the easier it is for, for me to print, the more likely it is going to appear in an episode. And speaking of episodes, to make sure you're subscribed on YouTube because tomorrow we, we kick off the Every Filament series with Peak, Peck, PEI, all kinds of crazy crap, the most advanced filaments, all that, all that ridiculous stuff. So uh, yeah, make sure you check out the contest rules uh, if you want to support the channel. Uh, feel free, you know, if you want to support the channel, subscription's a great way to do it. Or you can support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash 
Zach Friedman. I've had all the patrons scrolling, uh, scrolling around back there, but uh, I think, you know what? Let's, uh, what do you say we go ahead and thank them? Yeah, let's go ahead and thank some, thank some people. So, uh, uh, especially our, uh, our collaborators, Chuck Faduk, Small Dong, I'm Not Betacore, CMD, Possibly Command, Brian D. Swollen Nut, uh, Jeremy Arnold, Sweaty Veg. These are actually people who have given me the highest tier of Patreon support. Uh, and of course, our latest, Reagan, says if you line up all the blood vessels in a single human body end to end, they die. Uh, let's also thank our lab assistant supporters. Yeah. Uh, these folks are Varka, Tinker Bear, Eddie, District 3 Lear, My Yiddish Mama, Trans Rights, Nino Gansatano, Joe Wilkinson, World's Greatest Drone Pilot, Bachrinder FPV, Arrow Raider, Sir Derpington of Derptopia. Also, if you, any of you are in chat, you know, feel free to pipe up, feel free to pipe in. Uh, Rusty Flute, C. Harris, Chronome, Philip Kunsak, Bob Dobbington, Kevin DeGraff, Guy Gasm, Joe Harp, Bill Schooler, it's 2021 and I still go to My Little Pony conventions, Taranak, Michael Dunn, Autismo, uh, Roger Pinkham of the Great Star Theater, Powerful CCH, Robert Breeze, Nathan Johnson, TKMK, Sanforian, SXP, Ethan Gomez, Mark Whittington, Achilles Dance, My Puppets Dance, Michael Roche, Zoster, one handful of beans, not two, not five, not zero, it's one. Cats, Lydia K of the Cyberdeck Discord, uh, Period Clots, Chrome Runner, who sounds like they should be in the Cyberdeck Discord, Azundo, Connor Barnes, SA6HAM, if you're a ham operator, you gotta find them, Zoch, Olivia Yiptong, my dog is a bear, BLM and Friends, E Punman, Frenic Fanatic, protagonist, yeah, believe it or not, I'm only the supporting character. Uh, Daniel Cadwell, the Antifa, the, the whole thing, all of them, the, the 100%. A Blade of Kitten, Duck Distribution Specialist, and Acquirer of Stickers. Talon Democratic Socialist, and a Pretty Righteous Dude, Dash Zach. Brad Cox, and finally, Dylan Welch. No relation to the Grape Jelly Magnet. Thanks a lot to everyone who is helping our, uh, our Twitch helping our journey on Twitch get off to such a strong start. Uh, I... It's been a while since we've done any YouTube videos, but that is coming to an end because we're dropping a new one tomorrow and uh, hopefully a few more. This is really exciting stuff and you are going to see plenty of that in the future.